it'll make you laugh, it'll upset you, but most importantly, it'll make you think. This is Dogma Debate with David Smalley. Welcome to Dogma Debate. I'm your host, David Smalley. Today's a very special episode. We are broadcasting live, and in just a few moments, I will be with uh, preacher, minister, Eric Hernandez, who came all the way from Houston, Texas, to Dallas to have a live debate right here in my studio. Now, normally what I do is I bring pastors, preachers, Christians in this studio and challenge their worldview, challenge why they believe what they believe, and they tell me why I should believe the way they do. I do it with conservative Republicans, even Democrats who I disagree with. Tell me what your dogma is and why I should ascribe to that. Well, this one's a little different because Eric is here today um, to really challenge atheism, just in general. Why am I an atheist? Why it's a horrible worldview? Um, I'm, I'm going to try to get to that as soon as I possibly can. And the, the, the title of his upcoming book, I think, is what was most interesting. And so stick around for that in just a few moments. We're going to get that title. And if you're an atheist, uh, be prepared to be slightly offended by the title of his book. And, and I'm okay with you being offended by that. First, I want to say uh, thank you to all the folks listening out on WPRR 1680 AM and 95.3 FM in Grand Rapids, Michigan on 90.1 FM in Allegan County, Michigan and 88.3 FM WPJC out in Pontiac, Illinois. We love you. I'm understanding too there are a few more radio stations picking up this show and as soon as we get more details on that, um, I know there's some in East Tennessee and I think it's one 5.3, but we're getting all that uh, hammered out, and then we're going to be announcing some some new, bigger, and more fun stations that that are that are joining us. So, um, thank you to all those folks. Um, please join me in welcoming Eric Hernandez to Dog and Debate. Hello, Eric. Hey, how's it going? It's nice to finally have you in studio, man. Yeah, nice to be here. It's nice. I think I've I think I've checked off all the stuff I've got to get done to make this a show, and and now that we're ready, I think my work's done. And it's your turn. So, okay. so you're here to, to, to challenge atheism in general. Let's start by telling people the name of the book you're currently working on. Yeah, it's, uh, <clears throat> it's called Why I'm Not an Atheist, and the subtitle is An Analysis of the Self-Defeating, Irrational, Philosophically Inconsistent, Logically Incoherent, Unjustified Atheistic Worldview. <laughs> We could spend a whole show just talking about that. I hope we do. <laughs> that's uh, that's kind of what's what's happening. It's funny that you. Uh, I, I looked for that title. I was trying to explain to my daughter the title of your book, and mm-hmm. uh, I couldn't find it anywhere online. Is there somewhere where it says this is the title of your book? Uh, no, I mean, it's, I'm, I'm still working on it. So I haven't really okay. made any any put any stuff out there. Aside Maybe from it was the profile I saw, like the guest thing that said. The, okay. the name of the book you were working on. Okay. Okay. So I'll, I'll let you start. I, I, I could ask why you think that's the case and go, but I want you to drive this. I want you to ask me the questions you have for yeah. for challenging well, atheism. Well, if I can just explain first the, the, the point of the book and why it has that title. Uh, th- there's a lot of books I see that are in a defense of God or Christianity, and, and, and I like those books. I think there's, they, there's a lot of great books like that. But the approach I want to take is this. Uh, there's a lot of times I come to atheists and I say— um, I, I ask them, you know, what, they'll, they'll admit they're an atheist, fair enough, and I say, well, why are you an atheist? And sometimes they'll say, well, because there's no, well, first, I had one person say, I have thousands of reasons. I said, great, get me one. Uh, there's just too many to think of. I said, I just want one. Uh, she said, okay, um, because there's no evidence for God. I said, well, that's not really a reason, in, in a, a positive reason for your position. That's, if anything, a negative reason. Can you tell me why you are an atheist? Well, because this or that, or Christians have done a lot of bad things. I said, well, sure, but, you know, my friend David here, sometimes he does bad things, but he exists. And my friend David Shepard, not David Smalley, uh, but he still exists. So try, and, and I find just a lot of times there's really a lot of atheists I encounter don't have good arguments. I mean, it's just kind of like, geez, so you just complain and whine, and I haven't gotten any substantial evidence for it. Um, so the purpose of this book is not necessarily to defend, per se, the existence of God, although it does that indirectly. It's more of a backdoor approach to apologetics and saying, here's why what you believe can't be true. Here's why atheism can't be true. Here's why it's unjustified. Here's why it's inconsistent. Here's why it's become self-defeated in this area. Okay. I'm, I'm fine with that. 
I'm I'm interested in in, in yeah, reading okay. the book when it comes out. Oh, so thank you. so so what are, so what are your challenges? What what, what okay. challenges do you have for me? Why do you think atheism, I guess, is, right. is so self defeating? Well, we have to start with this: is is that uh, uh, let's talk about the nature of beliefs. Uh, sometimes beliefs logically imply other beliefs. So if I believe that all dogs are mammals, then I believe that my dog at home is a mammal. And if I were to say, well, all dogs are mammals except for my dog at home, then I'm it's special pleading it's ad hoc. What uh, what have you? Um, so sometimes atheists will say, well, atheism is just an answer to one question, namely whether or not I believe in God. And I say, okay, okay, fine, fair enough. But it also brings up a host of other questions which must have answers. To go back to the point uh, about an epistemic chain is a technical word that some beliefs logically imply other beliefs which lead to other beliefs. Okay. So I say, so let's take a look at this. If atheism is true, what would that imply? One of my arguments is known as the evolutionary argument against naturalism. It's also mixed in with the argument from reason. So here's, in a nutshell, how this... W w and this would be where it becomes atheism being unjustified, uh, even to the point of being irrational or rationally unjustified, and you can't really know anything. Um, if there is no God, then the only explanation to our existence would be a naturalistic evolution, an unguided process through... Uh, Things interacting with more things, matter upon matter, creating more complicated pieces of matter. Um, now, what guides us, if anything, is going to be naturalistic, uh, natural, uh, natural selection, which aims at survival value. So if, uh, if one wolf has long hair in the Arctic and another one has short hair, the longer-haired wolf is going to survive, and natural selection is going to uh, select for that. So the purpose, and I say that loosely, is to aim at survival value. Well, if that's the case, well, actually, first, uh, I explain that. Um, the second thing to explain before getting into the argument is uh, epistemology, uh, the study of knowledge. In order to have knowledge, there are at least a few requirements, and in a nutshell, uh, some of the most basic requirements uh, arguably are a justified true belief. So in order to claim that you know something, first of all, it has to be true because knowledge, by definition, must be true. There's no such thing as false knowledge. And it has to be rationally justified. So, for example, if I said, hey, uh, there's a guy right now in California. He's drinking a cup of coffee, wearing a red shirt while spitting on the sidewalk. Do you believe that? Well, you can't believe it because, first of all, you really don't have a justification for it, although it may be true. Uh, and you don't know if it is true, so you can't claim to know it. And I would even say you probably don't believe it because there's no reason to. Now, it's not saying you don't believe it. You just have no reason to believe it. So, that being said, if there's a justification without a defeater, something that would prove the justification false, and if your belief is in fact true, then you're on your way to knowledge. But if you don't have these things, then you cannot claim to have knowledge. So, that, that's a basis so far for that argument. Now, that being said, if our brains are the product of naturalistic evolution, then it's simply, its aim is for survival value and not truth value. That's the important key there, which means that my beliefs, if there is no God, do not have to be true. They just have to grant that they cause, they just have to cause survival value in my behavior. And that's, of course, assuming that our mental states uh, cause things for us, cause behavior. So if our brain and mental states, beliefs, thoughts, and so forth causes behavior, then according to naturalistic evolution, if atheism is true, your beliefs don't have to be true. They just have to work in the sense that they grant survival value. And if that's the case, then the atheist now has a defeater that takes away any justification for any belief that his brain will produce. Okay, I've lost you on why, according to naturalistic evolution, my beliefs don't have to be true. What do you, what do you mean by that? Mm -hmm. right? Okay. Because I was with you until you got to that sure, point. Sure, sure. Um, if I can, by way of illustration... Um, if if let's say you woke up in, and, and and I'm gonna answer the question, so uh, let me let me get to this illustration first. Let's say you woke up in the middle. Oh, no, I don't want to say middle of the night. Let's say you woke up in the middle of the day, and you look at your your microwave and it says twelve o'clock. Okay. Um, and then you form the belief it's twelve o'clock. You're justified in that belief based on what the microwave tells you. Uh, so you believe it's true. And then until you realize that your microwave is blinking 12 o'clock, there's water under your fridge, and it's really hot in the house, you would be safe in assuming that uh, the power must have went out. Now, does this mean it's not 12 o'clock? Well, no, but if your belief is formed on the basis of what the microwave says, then you now have a defeater for the belief it is 12 o'clock. 
Now, I'm not saying it's not 12 o'clock. I'm saying you are no longer justified on the basis of the microwave that is 12 o'clock, okay. even if it is. Okay, so, okay, let me, let me, <clears throat> this seems to be all predicated on the fact that it seems like you think atheism is a belief system. Uh, and of course it is. Yeah, but it's not, though. And that's where I think you're, you're attacking, it's almost as if you have a brand of Christianity and you can mm -hmm. look at Methodists and Mormons and Jews right. and Muslims and atheists and go, each one of you guys are a belief system different from mine and I can tell you why each one of your belief systems are invalid. Right. And you go through each one of the, your Methodists are wrong because of this, Mormons are wrong because of this, Muslims are wrong because of this, and atheists are wrong because of this. Atheists are the one that don't get to fall into that category Why not? because we lack a belief system. A a atheism is not <clears throat> in line with all these other belief and systems. And you believe that, right? I, I think that's the case. It's not a belief. <laughs> and that's the, that's the issue with this. Even back to your comment on natural selection, mm -hmm. I have to tell you, by your statement that natural selection um, chooses traits based on survival value, Yes demonstrates that you don't understand natural selection. So please explain. Because it does not always go in line with survival. It's just not always survival of the fittest or whatever's the mm -hmm. strongest. Okay. It's about adaptation to a specific environment. Okay, okay? hold on. Which so yes, it would, in, it, would it, would in, it would invite, it's very similar. I understand what you're saying. Mm -hmm. But humans, for example, right now have evolved to a certain degree where we don't have to be the biggest, baddest, strongest, and sure. fastest monsters to survive. Right. People who are brilliant also have, because of our environment, mm -hmm. survive very well without being strong or sure. fit or fast or muscular right. or anything, right? Mm -hmm. So each individual environment is, is going to depict what how that thing evolves. Furthermore, it's not about, and this is very important, it is not about survival of the individual creature. Mm -hmm. It's about the survival of that DNA continuing. Right. Can I, can meaning, I? meaning this, for example, when you look at the black widow spider, that, that as soon as the male mates with the female, he dies. That wouldn't make sense if, if what you're saying about evolution is true. No, that guy's going to want to live on after he mates with the female. So why would he continue to do this when every black widow spider, you know, is kills her, her mate? Well, this that would that would insinuate that black widow spiders are going to die off. Well, no, it's not about the survival of that individual. It's about the okay. carrying on yeah. of the DNA. OK, you brought up a few points. Let me interject here. Uh, first of all, you said it doesn't grant survival value, it grants adaptation, but is adaptation not to survive? Well, so, of course. So, we're kind of saying the same thing. Of so the DNA, yeah. of the DNA, not sure. of the individual. But <laughs> without individuals, you won't have the DNA surviving. Once the DNA sur once the DNA continues, uh -huh. though, what is the, what? the individual can die, and it doesn't matter yeah, to well, evolution. Well, uh, let me first say, we I haven't finished the argument, but I'm okay with that. Of course, what is a society but not a bunch of individuals? So, of course, it has to do with the individual, and the individuals as a whole form a society or group of species. So, yes, it is about the individual. Um, but essentially, you, I think you're conceding one of my points is that beliefs are kind of like our teeth. I mean, they're just like our, our teeth and, and, <coughs> and brains and eyes. They've evolved to help us, whether you call it adaptation or survival, they have evolved so that we can propagate our DNA. So yes, it is about the individual. Um, so that being said, if it is about survival value, then your beliefs do not have to be true for them to be passed on or for you to, to survive. What belief do I have? You're, you're, well, you're no, no, attacking no, it no, as okay, though atheism is a religion, no, okay. and it's not. I, I, see, I see where you're getting confused here. At this point, I'm not talking about atheists. I'm talking about the process of evolution via natural selection. And all I'm saying so far is, I'm, so far I've only laid out a foundation but that, Eric, you do realize that there are literally millions of Christians who accept evolution. They accept right, the science okay, yeah. behind it. Hold and the, on, though. So, so an Hold argument on. against eighth, against uh, an argument against evolution is not an argument against atheism. Right. Now, okay. First of all, I have not argued that this is false. I haven't even gotten to the argument yet. I, I really even haven't concluded the argument. So, well, you're you're considering evolution to be one of my beliefs, and it's not. Well, okay. Well. <laughs> Evolution is not a belief okay, of mine. Let, let me say, in the book, I do say this. Look, there's, there's a difference in between believing something as an atheist and believing something that is logically consistent with an atheism. If there is no God, then obviously there can be no creator, yes or no? That's true, but I okay, haven't... Okay, okay, well then, fair enough. So, the only game in town would be naturalistic evolution, yes or no? Yes, but that doesn't well, mean, that, that doesn't mean it's a belief. Oh. No, I have not. That doesn't mean it's a belief, Eric. Then That's what is what, it? It's an understanding of the science available right, to us. Right, which you believe. 
it's an understanding of it. It's not a. It's not a belief. But do you not believe this understanding? I mean, I, I think we're Look, going in circles. Here. No, I don't of see course how... we are. Because if if you were to say, do you believe? If someone were to ask you, do you believe David Smalley exists? I would say yeah. Yes, it's a ridiculous answer. How is it? Because you know David Smalley exists. Because if you exists. ask me if God exists, I say yes. And that's you call different. that a belief. That's oh, different. that's different. That's because special can't, pleading. Well, no, because you can't on, know David. that. Because you can't know that. Wait, you, you can no, no, know me. Uh, well, see, here's you the problem. No, no, no. Here's well, then you're. First of all, you're begging the question. I can't know God, and second, you're <laughs> confusing truth with belief. Something you can believe. I mean, you're confusing belief with knowledge. You can believe something, but if it's not true, then it's not knowledge. That, that's why I, I first started with a justified true belief, which is at least a necessary, even if not sufficient, condition for knowledge. So I can believe something. I can even have a justification for it. But if it's not true, it's not knowledge. How do you know if it's true or not? You have to be able to demonstrate it, right? Uh, well, that now we're getting into <laughs> theories of, 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 of truth and whatnot and well, knowledge. Well, you brought up epistemology, knowing did. something to be true, but you never described. No, 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 no. You never described how you can demonstrate no, what you know no. to be true. No, first of all, no, I'm not. See, you're getting into the method when I'm just getting into the requirements. That's completely different. I'm not saying here's the method. I'm saying here are the requirements. If I'm telling you here's how you bake a, if I say. These are the ingredients to bake a cake. And you say, but how do you bake it? I say, well, I'm not talking about how. Okay. I'm giving you the ingredients. Okay, so I think here, here's how I can clarify or get my own clarification. Do sure. you believe God exists or do you know God exists? Both. If you know something is true, there's no need for a belief, Eric. No, no, no. Come on. No, that that's just semantics there. If you have knowledge, you okay, if JTB, justified true belief, is a requirement for knowledge, then you have to believe it. It has to be true, and you have to have a justification. Obviously, I can't know something I don't believe. I can believe things that, that I don't, don't know, know. Right, right, because they're false. But if I know it, then I have to believe it. It's a requirement. Yeah, I don't think so. I, that, that, well, that, that doesn't <laughs> make any sense. If that you, doesn't if you do know something, for me if you know you something, so. if you know something, there's no need to call it a belief. Why? That's why I don't call it. That's now why, that's semantics. Though. No, no, no. That's why I say I don't believe evolution. I'll say I accept. The scientific evolution. Right. Obviously, you believe it. Okay. I, mean, I think we spent enough time on it. Okay. What, what, what is your actual challenge? Because so, I'm, I'm still not okay, well, getting I why, finished it. why this I, is an issue right, for I haven't finished it. Okay, thank okay. you. So, given that this is a logically consistent view, naturalistic evolution for athe the atheist, just like the microwave example, you cannot trust a belief based on the microwave because you now have a defeater for what it's telling you because the power went out. Similarly, if natural selection naturalistic evolution, selects for survival and not truth value, then your beliefs don't have to be true in order for you to survive. Well, mean? let me finish. What does that mean? Uh, I'm, I'm selects for there. truth value. I don't I'm understand. getting there. Um, so here's an example. Let, let's start with an example. Uh, let's say there's a car coming my way, right? And I form the belief a car's coming. Uh, if it hits me, it's going to kill me. I don't want to die. Therefore, I should move out of the way to avoid death. Those beliefs were true, and they granted survival value. So we're talking about behavior, and we're talking about beliefs and thoughts causing behavior. So if those thoughts, which were true, caused my behavior, then I'm going to survive and have the possibility of propagating my DNA. That being said, the point, I'll put it like this, naturalistic evolution does not care what you believe. Right. It only cares, and I'm personifying, admittedly, Sure. it only cares that you adapt and act in certain ways that grant survival, which means I could equally have a different set of beliefs when this car comes my way, such as this. A car's coming my way. doesn't matter what you believe. As long as you get out of the way, the DNA survives. Exactly. So I can Fine. think I can think a car's coming my way, but I'm Superman. It's not going to kill me. However, as Superman, I need to protect my identity. So the best thing to do is move out of the way to appear human. Those beliefs were false, but they produced survival value and granted that I survived to propagate I'm my fine DNA. fine with that, yeah. Okay, perfect. Then if you're an atheist, you now have a defeater for everything you believe because you have no way of verifying what you believe if your beliefs are only aimed at survival, not truth, which means your very belief that there is no God is unjustified. It <sighs> just doesn't make sense. How, do you, how does it not? I don't understand. I don't understand how you're making the leap from... If yeah, you're an atheist, leave. you have a defeater for everything. What because do you mean Because you cannot by that? trust the thoughts that your brain produces because it is not a brain which was designed to obtain truth. That makes absolutely no sense. Tell me how or why. Because of the scientific method. What because does that, ways, what does have to do with because of ways Because of ways we test things. And we know ah, things to be right, true. Right. Yep. We know okay. ways to we know ways to demonstrate right. knowledge. Mm -hmm. We can test things. We can repeat things okay. in an experiment, yep. for example. 
So yep. are you telling me this? Are you well, telling me that? Are you telling me that as an atheist, if I go into a lab and I I have a hypothesis about something mm-hmm. and then I test that hypothesis right. and I see I observe it and it's demonstrable and I go, yep, my hypothesis was true. Mm-hmm. Are you saying that only Christians? <laughs> Can know that that's true? <laughs> no, no, you'd be missing the argument if, if you said that. Let me let me answer your 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 uh, your objection about being able to test it. See, here's the problem, and, and which is it, which I'm I'm comforted comforted in that this is your objection because I already covered that in the book. Um, if you have a defeater for every belief that your brain produces, then you cannot test any belief, assuming that your beliefs are going to be true or false. Why? Because your very desire to test a belief. And your very beliefs about the test were equally not aimed at truth. So now that becomes circular reasoning and question begging that you can step out. I know that's why I'm not an atheist. That You can step outside your (laughs) worldview and see if it's true or not. This just seems so silly. I'm Eric. sure I it hate would. that you based an entire book on this. Oh no! Well, that's because one chapter, you're saying. Not the entire <laughs> oh, good, good. I hope it's just. Oh, I hope it's at the back somewhere. No, because this is this is ones. really weird to me that you're saying that because I accept the mountain of evidence that is naturalistic evolution. Then you make this leap that I can't know mm, anything to be yeah. true ever. How do you? I, you keep calling this self defeater, and I guess what you're saying is because evolution or natural selection selects based on well, adaptation it doesn't it's not based on truth well, i haven't got to the self-defeating part yet I, you've said repeatedly that i have a self-defeater what I, is I've my self-defeater it, okay so if you say that for example if if you acknowledge the argument which you haven't yet and that's fine but let's say you acknowledge the argument yes i now have a defeater for all my beliefs and i say okay but then you begin to say but i can test it then you are you are begging the question that your beliefs can be reliable, that anything your brain produces is reliable. I didn't say that. No, I'm not saying you did. I'm saying if you were to concede that. And that's where it becomes self-defeating once you start trying to defend the beliefs that your beliefs aren't reliable because that would be a belief. Yeah, no, so, so okay, so the brain is definitely fallible. I'm all over that. But the, sure. evidence, the evidence and <laughs> being able to demonstrate over and over a fact uh-huh. It exists with or without my mm, ability to understand right, it. Right. You keep talking while I'm talking. I'm going to ask you to stop okay. doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, whenever I s- test something in, an, in an, in a laboratory and it demonstrates over and over that it's correct, mm-hmm. whether my brain understands it or not, it stands outside of that. And so what we do is people with brains review stuff and then go, yep, we think this is the answer. And then other scientists come along and go, actually, you made a mistake in that. And it's constantly correcting itself because the method itself demonstrates knowledge and that's yeah. where we get the knowledge from we don't just get knowledge from atheist brains thinking of stuff hell no we wouldn't trust that no mm-hmm. nobody should ever just trust the brain because you're an atheist or because you're a christian people have wrong thoughts all the time regardless of their worldview yeah okay. so i don't depend on my brain i depend on the evidence itself right well <laughs> which you would do by using your brain and let me answer something you for said my earlier. Own, for my own decision well, making. Sure, yeah. that's the okay. only thing you can use. But if right. it, there's a defeater for it, then you're back to the same problem. And what's the defeater? Earlier, you oh, hold on. Earlier, you said so. Am I saying only Christians can know things? No, no, no. It has nothing. That, that's the point of my book. It has nothing to do with per se Christianity. I'm talking about the atheist views. So only believers, that. only believers of religion, can know things to be true. And atheists. No, see. I'm I'm trying I'm trying to find no out no here. I understand that I, I don't understand, understand. you keep I saying understand. atheists have a self defeater what is the self defeater I I've said that for the, okay I've said that for the title of the book and I've tried to explain that within the argument I'm not saying only Christians can know things I am saying reg- let's let's set Christianity aside again I'm focusing on the atheist worldview that's it okay given naturalistic evolution that's it so I'm saying if it is true whether you're Christian or not if that is the case that there is no God then you cannot trust anything your brain tells you. Now, if you're going to tell me, ah, but I can test it, then you're trusting your brain, which is begging the question. If you have a defeater for any belief your brain produces, then you cannot trust it through testing it because you're still using your brain. If I can go back to my illustration about the microwave. If your power in, in th- if the power in your house went out, then you say, ah, the microwave says 12, but you know what? I can test this. Let me go to my bedroom and look at the alarm clock. clock. Ah, my alarm clock says 12 too, so that's, that, that justifies my belief in the microwave. No. If the power goes out, it affects every clock in the house, and you can't go to another clock, which is equally defeated, to show that your belief is true. If you use your brain, or anyone else's brain, or a scientist's brain, or a Christian brain, whatever brain you like, if atheism is true, every brain has a defeater for it, including you using your own brain trying to test 
your beliefs? Uh, we would have, I mean, naturalistic evolution is not perfect. Um, and it doesn't, it's not linear. It doesn't go from stupid to really smart, right? Mm-hmm. It branches out. There are tons of trees and branches of the tree. And there are sort of all these different adaptations. I don't know a single person who accepts evolution who would say that brains don't make mistakes. Mm-hmm. So sure. all brains make mistakes. Mm-hmm. That's why evidence and experiments are performed outside of the human brain to consistently demonstrate it. Right, but I think you're missing the point here. I'm not saying brains should be perfect or Christian brains are perfect. I'm saying given naturalistic evolution, you have a defeater for every belief your brain produces. Meaning I know I could make a mistake. No, meaning you cannot justify any belief you have. And if you cannot justify it, then you cannot have knowledge. That's why we don't call it a belief. That's why we say this is what we know to be true through through demonstrable and observable science. I'm not relying on my brain to say it's true. We're relying on the experiment, which is outside of the human brain. And what do you use to to, to figure that out? Right. Each individual human will look at it their own way. No, And you using your what? Me, I will use my brain, right. my own brain to see right. what what I accept. Mm-hmm. Right. But that that's that you have the same issue because <laughs> you have the same brain. You have the same issues with brains that I have issues with brains. We could both make mistakes. Not if my and worldview I don't see, is true. Well, but that's the issue. You can't know something to be true uh, in most cases. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a. I, I argue with other atheists about this line, but mm-hmm. some would say uh, you can't know something to be true unless you can demonstrate it, which then the atheist would look at you and say, you can have a belief in your God, but you can't demonstrate to me that your God exists, and that's what makes me an atheist. Atheism is mm-hmm. not evolution. That's right. called biology, sure. right? Atheism is not humanism. And the way I operate in my morality, my morality doesn't come from atheism. Mm-hmm. Atheism doesn't provide me that. My humanism does. So atheism informs my worldviews, but atheism is not my worldview. And you even call atheism a worldview in the title of your book, and I think right. that's incorrect. Okay, fair enough. But again, I think you're, you're, I think we're talking past each other and that you're missing me. And the point I'm saying is I'm not saying atheism equals evolution I, what I said in the beginning was some beliefs logically imply other beliefs for example if I said I was a Christian but there's no God clearly you'd be like come on that's that's you yeah, know that's right. okay right Can't happen. so I would say I would argue consistently speaking if you're an oh, atheist, I've heard people say that by the way they refer oh, sure, to themselves as yeah. atheist Christians sure, I've, yeah. I've heard it yeah yeah which is right inconsistent so my only point is what they mean is they're Christian in culture right they go to the things they practice all the stuff, but deep down inside, they don't actually believe the stuff mm-hmm. to be true. I, I have an issue with the terminology. Sure. Some of my friends Yeah, use. I have an issue with a lot of terms atheists use because I, I find a lot of redefining in this, but I'm not saying that atheism equals evolution. I'm saying it leads to that, to, lo- to be logically consistent in the explanation for, for our existence. So again, the only point is here is that any brain, if atheism is true, because you said you have that problem too, I'm saying everyone has that problem if there is no God. So if there's no God, then sure, I have that problem, and so do you, and we're just all stuck in this rut that we cannot justify oh. our beliefs. So, but if I'm right, if atheism is true... Then you can't trust that belief. And naturalist... Hold on. If atheism is true, you couldn't trust your belief either. Absolutely. That means right. then your belief in God is false yeah. because... Well, not false. That's not what the argument concludes. Again, remember I said about the microwave. You can't justify it. Right, which means if atheism you can't know is tr- it. Okay. Yes. Okay. So you see there. So, so I don't. You, I just don't. I, I don't see how it means we can't know anything, though. Because you can't I justify. Thi- it. I th- well, I think what it means is we can't trust ourselves independently. We can't always trust our brains, which is why observation, repeatable experiments, and demonstrating our experiments is so important. Okay. Well, and when we try to demonstrate or observe God, we're unable to do so. Right, but again, I, I, that's when you um, get past, you, you, you still can't, get, if you concede with me that you can't trust your brain, I don't know if you, you've conceded that or not. If atheism is true, then we all have that problem. I, I think it's too generic of a statement. Um, I, I would say, I mean, it just all depends on what you're talking about when you say you can't trust your brain. Well, what I mean, that I, to me is like asking how much does a car cost? There's more to it than mm, can we trust our brain? Look, have you ever seen water on a dry road? You're driving yeah, along, sure, you see water. Sure, sure. Well, what, what, how do you know you're wrong right. about that? Uh-huh, because right. the same senses that mm-hmm. fooled you are the senses that correct you. So th- there's some issues with having trust, but then the senses also correct the misinformation. Yeah, but see, I'm the only reason I'm saying 
that on atheism you can't trust your beliefs is not because you can't test it. I'm saying everything produced by it cannot be trusted, including the belief that you can test it. I'm fine with saying I can't trust a belief. I am, which is why most of the time when I say something, I'll say, I could be wrong about this, mm -hmm. but here's what I think is the case. Here's what right. I believe right now, but I'm not sure if this is true or not. And then when evidence is shown or information comes out, ah, I was right about that, as it turns out. Or, nope, I was wrong about that. And what you're saying is in that moment when I review the evidence, I still can't trust my brain? Absolutely. Okay, that's because where I Because everything that your brain produces has a defeater. And I think you're just stretching at that point. I think it's grasping at straws, okay. trying to make atheists look completely ridiculous. Please defend that, that I'm stretching it. Well, because, again, I've, I, you're right. This is, this is coming to circles mm -hmm. because it's about... Uh, demonstrating, observing, and repeating. That mm -hmm. we, the scientific method is set up the way it is, precisely because we can't trust human brains. So we so, set ourselves up, we test ourselves, we test our hypothesis, we come up with an idea and a thought, and then we run the test against it and go, actually, we were wrong about that. Here's the truth. Now let's test that truth and let's make sure this is true. Mm -hmm. And we're constantly doing it, which is why we're always updating science methods. Right. We're updating technology. We're updating. We'll go back and, and fix errors Darwin made and go, ah, we don't think he was right about this. Um, he came up with a concept called gemules. Those don't exist genes are actually what he was kind of referring to but we've corrected that and we understand what he meant and so we're always fixing it so yeah right. we don't necessarily rely on the human brain for knowledge in that respect which is why we have science we don't have to rely on our beliefs right and here's where i would say you're begging the question and you're, you're, you're missing the point you said the scientific method was developed because we can't trust our brains, yet a brain developed the scientific method, right, which to be begs the question. To be wrong. It's to be self-checking. It's just like whenever you do a math problem. Hold on. When you do a math problem, you know that you can always do that math problem backwards, right, to check your math. When you do it forwards and then you do it backward, that is the answer, and you know that that's the true answer. Because you've done it two different ways and you got the same answer. You worked the problem backward and it worked. Mm -hmm. You know that's going to be the correct answer. You didn't rely on your brain. You were like, I could be wrong about this, so let me work it back and test myself. So whose and brain did you rely on, if not yours? You, you relied on your brain at the end to <laughs> test it. I mean, it, according no. to this, Eric, this is, this is where you get off into la-la land and no. go... I may not even own a house. This is where you get into Cy Ten Bruggenkate territory no. and go, I could be a brain in a vat. How do I know I exist? How do, just, why even wear a watch? Screw the watch. Who knows what time it is? It's Alice in Wonderland. I mean, dude, you no. really have to stretch. At some point, you have to say, I know this to be true because I tested it. Which is why I'm not an atheist. That's why the book's <laughs> called that, because that's okay. exactly the point. If that's what you have to go to, given atheism, then absolutely everything mm. you said is correct, which is why I'm not an atheist. If you cannot trust your brain, then you cannot tell me I can trust the, my brain. Oh brain when it develops a scientific method and test it because you're assuming that the beliefs prove, uh, provided through the test are still trustworthy yet they're still based on your brain but if you want we can go on to another argument so what is atheism to you when you're coming here to challenge atheism and you say self self-defeating worldview what Tell me what, in your de definition, what, what is atheism? I don't want to go on this rabbit trail because I would, I would be comfortable with whatever definition you have for the sake of argument and simply say, if there is no God, then this is what follows. So if you'd like, I'd like to move on to another argument. Well, I want to be clear that, and, and especially for, for your um, friends and family and, and, and congregation who are listening. Mm -hmm. Hi, guys. Um, yeah, hi, guys, if you're still out there. Uh, <laughs> um, atheism is not an assertion that there is no God. I think, I think a lot of people, a lot of Christians mostly, redefine atheism to say that athe if you're an atheist, you have a belief that there is no God. And there are some dictionaries that say that too, and that's just wrong. And it's sad that even dictionaries get it wrong. It's, it's, it's without a theism. If you're a theist, you, you believe in a theism. You believe in, you have your theology and a God that you believe in, theos. If you're without that belief, you are atheist, just like agnostic is without knowledge. Atheist is without a theism. I, atheism just means without a belief. I, I don't even think, I mean, I, if you point to me to a specific God, I can say, uh, we're pretty confident that God doesn't exist. So before you get into your next argument, Eric, let me ask you just a couple of questions mm -hmm. just to kind of clarify this. Do you believe that Zeus is a real being? What does that have to do with atheism and why I'm not an atheist? I told you I'm going to ask a couple of questions okay, to clarify. Fair enough. Do sure, you believe 
Do you believe that yeah. Zeus is a real being? No. So when it comes to Zeus, mm. you are atheistic. You no. are without that theism. No. You so you are with that theism. No. Do you believe in Zeus or not? No. Then you are atheistic to Zeus. No. <laughs> what? I'll explain. What are you it's, talking I, I, about? I just don't want to interrupt you. The so point is, we when... can go through God by God by God, and you you can line both of us up, David and Eric, and go, mm. do you believe in Zeus? Do you believe in Horus? Do you believe in Demeter? Do you believe in... And we go line by line, we will both say, nope, 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 nope. Mm. And we get to the last one, and you go, oh yeah, that invisible magic yeah. deity is true. And I go, I'm still going to stick with no. Mm-hmm. That's the difference between us. No, okay. I, can I interject? Go ahead. There? Okay. Yeah. First of all, I think it's and it's not to you. No offense, and you of course know I'm gonna be offensive when I say no offense, right? <laughs> you say the dictionaries. I I think it's slightly arrogant to say yeah, all the dictionaries are wrong because did I say all is, the dictionaries are wrong? Well, I, I'm being I said hyperbolic. some dictionaries know, are wrong. I know. Hold on. I'm, it I'm, would be arrogant to say that, but you can't okay, apply okay. that title to me when I didn't right. say it. I, okay, let me qualify what you said because I was just for the sake of the point. You said. A lot of these dictionaries are wrong, and I think it's quite arrogant to say, you know what, if you don't believe with what I believe the definition of atheism is, then you're wrong even if you're a dictionary. I think no, that's that's a bit arrogant. It's not arrogant, but, Eric. Uh, okay, that's it's fine. Not, it's the history that's, of that's, the word. You can look fine. into the history of the that's word. That's fine, and you got me. We're on this rabbit trail, which I don't want to get into, but we're here. Uh, hello, rabbits. So, you said, am I an atheist in regards to this or that? That's not the definition of atheism is to uh, – you got me. You got me here. We're here is, I would say, is the belief that there is no God or gods. So if you call me an atheist just because I don't believe in Zeus, no, that's not true. As long as I believe in at, in least, at least one, one God, God yeah. then I cannot be an atheist. Yeah, I know. But again, like you said, for the sake of the argument, my point is, you don't believe in Zeus. There you go. And that's all you can say. You don't believe in Demeter. Absolutely. So you reject all of these gods. Yes. Would you say you have a belief that the God doesn't exist or that you yeah. lack a belief in that God? That I believe it does not. That this okay, God does that's not a, exist. Okay, I just think that's a false way of looking at that's it. That's fine. I don't think it's a positive belief. I think it's a belief that you're lacking. I wouldn't say that you believe <laughs> Zeus doesn't exist. I would say you lack a belief in Zeus. Would you say I know Zeus doesn't exist? No. Really? So you don't know that Zeus doesn't exist? I wouldn't. Well, when you get to specific, oh, you said you were asking me about your belief. I would say I know that. Yeah. Because okay. when you get okay. to yeah, you, when you yeah. get to specific specific principles about a deity that are mutually exclusive, that being can't exist. Okay. So they're like right. when you talk about Yahweh mm-hmm. and yeah. say Yahweh will love you and watch out for you and mm-hmm. watch over you, and Psalms one twenty one seven says he'll mm-hmm. keep you safe, yeah. and then he doesn't, mm-hmm. and he's a like you say right. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. But in Matthew 10, 34, he says, I didn't come to bring peace. I yeah. came to divide families. Okay, well, now we have mutual right. exclusive properties. This thing can't exist. Yeah, and you're using a Bible that you don't believe in to disprove a guy you don't believe in. But let's not go there because, so, again, that's not that's the right. point. Yeah, so that's it. I don't want to. I really I don't use the go Bible. I, I use the Bible. I use the Bible to review to see if I do believe in that God. That's what I did. I'm not using okay, it to refute it. Sure, that's fine. Okay. Um, you can get on to your next argument because we're only down to. Ra- oh, radio geez. listeners, I know, radio listeners only have about great. nine minutes, but I think we'll extend it for the podcast, folks. Okay, uh, fair enough. But um, we do have to break in nine minutes to end the radio okay, portion. Okay, wow. Um, sorry, guys. Uh, hopefully you can you can log in and, and, and finish listening. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm going to stay on the actual free podcast for another 30 uh, minutes. Okay. So radio listeners out there, you I can go you. to dogmadebate.com as the podcast. After that's over, though, we will have to go to the extended okay. show. So. That that argument was you can't trust your beliefs. You have a defeater for everything. You can't know anything. And if you do know something, then you can't be an atheist. The next argument would be, or one of the arguments, I don't know if I'd want to go in order, would be, okay, given that, if if this is true, then I would say that this leads to a belief in physicalism, which is a view that human beings are only physical things with only physical properties. If that's the case, then consciousness should not exist, which means if consciousness does exist, then you can't be an atheist. Let me unpack that. Wow. I know. I, that's why I'm you not an atheist. You make huge I leaps, know. dude. No, no you make huge leaps. Leap. Okay. All you're doing is complaining and asserting no, 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 but you have not provided or demonstrated, which I'm is the thing you that get you your, think. I'm letting you get your, okay. letting you get your argument enough. out. And I thank you for that. By the way, I just want to take a moment and say thank you for letting me come on and do this because I don't know too many atheists who would let me. So <laughs> yeah, really, I, don't mind. I, I, don't mind. I really do. I, I appreciate what what you do. No, I think if you're going to refute something, you should understand what you're refuting. So Absolutely. Let's let's hear the argument. Okay. So consciousness is not physical. I'll throw that out there, and Can, and here's oh, why. Okay, I don't. Uh, That's fine. If I, I, if I disagree, do you want me to just wait until you're done? Sure, okay. I, and I'll tell you when when you can if you want to jump in, and then the last thirty seconds of the show, you're gonna <laughs> give me that. <laughs> yeah, you have thirty <laughs> seconds. Uh, okay, so there's something known as a law of identity, which says basically this: if two things are the same, 
which would essentially mean we're not talking about two things, we're talking about one, but giving them different names, then whatever's true of one should be true of the other, which means they should have all the same properties. So for example, if Eric Hernandez is the same person as Kendall Hernandez's husband, which is my wife, how you doing, sweetheart? Then whatever's true of Eric Hernandez must be true of Kendall's husband. Fair enough? Say that one more time. Whatever's true of Eric Hernandez must be true of Kendall Hernandez's husband, if they're the same person. Whatever, all the properties should be shared. If it's all from the same perspective, I suppose, yes. I don't but, know what that would mean, but okay. Because what you know about yourself may be different from what your wife knows about you, and so she may refer to you as her husband and make a statement about you that's wrong. This has nothing to do with my wife, as much as I love her. I'm saying, oh, we're talking about a law of identity here so far. Let me, let me okay. give a different no, example. No, I understand the law of identity. I'm just, I want to I wanna be clear that not everything is so black and white, and I think that's a lot of the issues with this argument. <laughs> but is what you, you said not everything's black and white, and yet you say that as a black and white statement. Um, so if, <laughs> if, let's say... X and Y, if X and Y, whatever you want to put in there, are the same thing, then whatever's true of one should be true of the other. For example, if H2O is the same thing as water, then they should share all the same properties. I'm sure you could agree with yes, that. Yes, I'm okay, good Okay, good. <clears throat> so if water has a freezing point of this, then H2O has a freezing point of it's this. It's just another word for the same thing. Perfect. Thank you. Right. Exactly. So, however, based on the law of identity, if I could hypothetically show that there's something true of water that's not true of H2O then apparently they're not the same thing even if we thought they were. Now, that's just the example. I mean, the, the, for the sake of the argument, here, here's an example. Let's say I go into a laboratory and I find chemical X and then I find a bottle labeled water and I say, okay, are these the same thing? I look at them and they're both clear. So they both have the property of being clear. So far, they're the same. Um, and, but then I turn the bottles around and I see that chemical X is flammable Whereas okay. water is not. So, okay. of course, based on the law of identity, they're not the same thing, right? Right. Because they share different properties. Okay. That being said, and I'm giving you the quick rundown of this argument. If consciousness is physical, then it has to share the same properties as the brain. Because it's the same thing. Like you said beautifully, it's just another way of saying the same thing, another name, right? So, if my mind is just my brain then whatever is true of my mental states and properties must be true of the properties of my brain and or body. But yeah, they're this, not. This whole thing is fallacious, and let me tell you why. Please. Consciousness, although we're still trying to understand it. Who? Scientists trying to understand consciousness. Okay. Um, I don't agree with it. It doesn't, <laughs> you don't understand that scientists are trying to understand I, consciousness? I, I, I disagree that it's a scientific question. Of course. Okay, okay. You think it's metaphysical? Absolutely. Okay. So, do you think a voice is physical? Hmm. Can you touch a voice? I don't know. No, I don't think so. Okay, but it is the property, it is the, it is the product of a physical reaction, of your vocal cords sure. vibrating, sure. causing a sound that you can't touch. Sure. Consciousness is just like that. It is the property, it is the product, so you have physical chemicals in your brain, mm -hmm that cause a thought to happen that is not physical. So ah. the thought itself is the product mm. of physical things happening. But you that did doesn't, admit. That doesn't mean <laughs> it is, it is some, something from a god or uh -huh, something. But you did, I, we're not talking about God. We're talking about atheism. That's the point of my book. So you admit that thoughts aren't physical. You just admitted that, right? Listen very carefully because you're trying to trap <laughs> no, me into no, something. No, 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 I'm not trying to trap. I'm, I'm asking for chemical reactions. <laughs> chemical reactions uh -huh. in your brain that create thoughts right. is a chemical physical <laughs> process that happens, right? Uh -huh. But a lot of people would say that because you can't touch a thought, mm -hmm. that it's not physical. And I'm right. telling you, it's like a voice. Okay. My voice. I wouldn't call my voice metaphysical because I can't touch it. I wouldn't either. So it's a physical. A thought. A thought is a physical process. But you can't touch the thought itself. You didn't answer my it's question. It's like you though. can't touch the voice itself. Okay, first of all, I'm not. You're not debating those people. You're you're talking to me here. I didn't say that. I didn't say because you can't touch it automatically. Therefore, metaphysical. I never said that. I just want a clarification. Did you concede already that thoughts are not physical? Because if you did, we can skip a lot and go <laughs> to the argument. That'd be great. I, I the way you worded it, I think, is a trick question, because the physical process itself is physical. The process of having a thought is a physical process. But the thought itself, I don't believe, is something we could touch. It's an idea. Uh, okay. An idea is, I guess, by definition, metaphysical. I don't no, know. I wouldn't. No. I don't know that I would call it that. Okay. I, I wouldn't either. But I, I still don't. So you're saying you don't know if it's physical? I can't. I can't. 
again, the chemical reaction in your brain is a physical reaction that yes. happens that creates sure, the thought. Sure, sure. But it's just like my analogy with the voice. Is a voice physical? When I, I asked you that, you went, I don't know. Yeah, That's I, how I, I feel know. about right. a thought. Okay. It's, it's a, okay, it's a reaction. Enough. It's a reaction. Okay. It's a product or a symptom mm-hmm. of a physical process. Okay. Well, earlier you told me that it wasn't physical. And, and l- let's forget about your beliefs in particular. Because if they're not physical, then now you're a property dualist. So you'd be a dualist like me. And I would say, welcome to the team. And I would say that that's not a natural fit. And that's ad hoc given naturalistic evolution and atheism. But that being said you would then concede that thoughts or the mental properties and states are not the same thing as a brain, which would go to show that you are now talking about two different things. Even if you said it came yeah, from the physical. of course I would say that. I would say a thought is not the same as a brain. Perfect, perfect. Now, now we're getting somewhere. Now um, we're getting somewhere that the show's ending. That's great. <laughs> well, we're getting somewhere with this argument. Yeah. Um, basically, it, we're, and we can go up into a lot more, and I don't know when you want to take the break. I don't know if you want me to hold the thought or just... No, go ahead and finish, but just wrap up in like 20 seconds here. Okay, basically that, uh, well, first of all, then you're no longer a strict naturalist, which is fine, but then that is that is not a good fit for atheism, which would mean that you can't really be an atheist in that sense. And then you would have to explain where these immaterial properties come from. You try to assert that properties can emerge from the physical, and I can show Sorry. you why that's simply not possible, given that it would only be a structural property. Okay, and, and that would aren't. be, and that to me, would be a God of the Gaps argument. No, I'm not even Let talking about God. I'm Let me not finish. Let me finish. That would God. be a God of the Gaps argument, because I'm going to say, if I go, hey, look, these two physical things happen, and then that means a thought happens, and I don't know how that thought happens. I don't know if that thought is physical. That's a Gaps that argument. Doesn't, no, listen to me. That doesn't mean that I should then accept a God existing because I can't explain that. I haven't asked that would you mean, to. No, but that would still make me an atheist to say, I'm an atheist even though I don't know how this sure. process happens. Right, right. So that's it. I don't, I, don't no, have no. To, I don't have to not be an atheist because I don't understand something. Well, I've got to go, okay. what we're going to do, we're not going to end the show for the podcaster. Okay. The people who's listening as a podcast, you can keep listening. We're going to take a short break and come back. For the radio listeners, we have to go. Join us at login.dogmadebate.com to get this entire show without commercials. Podcast listeners will be right back. Welcome back to Dogma Debate. Um, so for our radio listeners, uh, they're gone now. But the, the, the much larger audience, I believe, is, is the podcast listeners. So they're still with us now, and we can go about another 30 minutes on here, Eric, maybe 28. We've got to cut okay. it about a, an hour 30, right. or um, that causes issues with iHeartRadio sure. being able to broadcast on there. So we'll stop there and then go to uh, the extended show at login.dogmadebate.com. So um, let's continue on <coughs> with, with where we were, unless yes. you want to start a new one at this point. Uh, no, let's, let's wrap this one up a little bit. Um, okay, so... <laughs> First of all, I'm not asking you to accept God or his existence. In fact, in the first part of the book, I say, look, if you're an atheist reading this, because I'm essentially, I'm, I want to write to atheists. What I find is that a lot of atheists really don't know what they believe or what their beliefs entail. So I'm just trying to just lay the cards on the table. And if it upsets them or it, uh, 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 if, if it kind of, if they don't like it, then I'll say, well, good. You see where I'm coming from. And then that's really it. Um, although at the end of the book, I, I, I will say, but look, I'm not going to also deny you if you do want to, you know, change your beliefs, you're free to do that. Okay, so it seems like you, you've conceded that you're at least a property dualist, and you believe that human beings are not just physical, but they also have immaterial properties, but you said you don't know. Well, and no, still that's not what I said. What, okay. what, I, what I said was, for one, if this is, it, se- it seems like what you're saying, Eric, is that this is a, uh, an, an inconsistent property with atheists. So if you believe this, mm-hmm. you can't be an atheist. Or, no. or at least that, you know what, if you, you can't know this to be true if you are an atheist, sort of a, an <clears> idea. And to me what it sounds like <clears> is, and that's why I went to, uh, that doesn't get us any closer to your God existing. And you're like, no, 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 I'm not arguing for that right, God. Right. I know you're not, but you're arguing against atheism, mm-hmm. which means if I'm not an atheist, what am I? I have to be an a theist. No, I am an agnostic atheist. Mm, well, we're not going to go there again. I, I'd rather not go there again. But I'm, I'm an just... agnostic atheist. I admit that I lack knowledge, but I also lack of a belief based on the knowledge I do have. That's a contradiction. No, it's not. Okay. It's perfectly consistent right. to say you're you're without knowledge when it comes to knowledge, but that with the knowledge you have, mm-hmm. like you don't have all of the knowledge, do you? You admit that you mm-hmm. were missing knowledge, mm-hmm. so you were an agnostic theist. Mm-mm. Sure you are. No, I, I don't. I'd rather you're, really... You're I completely get back to the redefining words. Okay, go ahead. No, I think you're redefining no, words. No, dude, you, you can't that, just say I'm uh, lacking knowledge, but I'm uh, not agnostic. Uh, agree to disagree because uh, I really want okay. I rather get to the arguments because I know that there's a lot of atheists who've never heard these arguments and that's that's unfortunate um, so if these immaterial properties exist first of all I, you you were trying to impose or imply that they would be they would be immaterial but they would still come from the physical 
just like a voice. <laughs> Sound waves are physical. And I'm okay with that. Right, which means mm. there could be some physical property of a thought. But just uh. we don't know that yet. And that's my whole point, is that you can be an atheist and lack knowledge in something and go, you know what, I don't know the answer to that, but that doesn't mean I should accept a theism. Mm. I can remain an atheist who doesn't know the answer to that question. And that's okay. Because I, I lack knowledge in something doesn't mean I should mm-hmm. abandon atheism right. altogether mm-hmm. and accept the deity. Right. And, 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 and to be fair, this chapter builds on to eventually lead into the soul. So I, I'm, just, I'm just getting my feet wet here. Uh, to, to show, because, see, and then you said thoughts are physical. So, I, I, so you do believe thoughts are physical? Or I not? don't know. The same you question okay. you okay. have about fair a enough. voice, I can say that their sound waves are physical. Well, Perhaps, you know, we can measure thoughts too. No, no. You can measure. No, you Jesus. can measure thoughts. It happens all the time with MRIs. Let, let, let me go back to. Let me let me finish where I left off with the law of identity, and I think this would help. If two things do not share the same properties, then at best you have correlation and causation, but not identity. And a lot of atheists and other people confuse the law of identity with the law of causality or cause and effect relationships. Mm-hmm. That is not the same thing. I know where you're just going because this. fire causes smoke or oxygen causes the fire to grow does not mean that oxygen, fire, or smoke are the same thing. I agree. So just because thoughts can be correlated with brain activity does not mean that thoughts are physical. And the reason we know that is because thoughts do not share the same properties as a brain. Let me give a few examples. I'm fine with that, but it also doesn't mean thoughts aren't physical. Yes. Let me get to the examples, and and you can disagree with the examples here. Okay. So if thoughts are physical or beliefs or any other mental state, there's five different mental states. I I lay them out in the book, but there's five different mental states, but let's just stick with thoughts and beliefs. If thoughts are physical, then they need to share the same properties as their brain states. That's false. You're basing it on a false premise. Okay, why is that a false premise? Because I haven't gotten to it yet. I know, but just because that's missing doesn't mean you get to automatically assume the opposite. Well, uh, well, let let, let me go to the examples, and you tell me what you think of those. Okay, so... Because if something lacks physical properties, and it's obviously not physical. So if a thought, for example, my brain can be seven inches long, but my thought that uh, I'm on dogma debate is not seven inches long. The taste of banana is a mental experience of a sensation, but the taste of banana doesn't weigh three pounds, but my brain could weigh three pounds. So given that thoughts and brain states are not the same thing, and neither do they share the same properties, and more so that mental states lack physical properties and they are not the same thing based on the law of identity. Who is arguing that a thought equals the same thing as a brain? <laughs> People like, I don't know, maybe Daniel Dennett, uh, some other I don't think physicalist. he said that a thought is well, the same no, thing well, as a brain. He is, he I think dismisses. you're misrepresenting his argument. Maybe, maybe, but I know that he dis does not he dismisses consciousness, and I don't want to talk about Dennett, but there's a lot of atheists who are strict physicalists and show that consciousness, that there is no consciousness because it can't be physical, or they'll either say, ah, well, it's physical only because it comes from a physical reaction, which doesn't make it physical. Or that's or that's more along of, the lines of what I'm saying, okay, is that it enough. comes from a physical reaction. Okay, sure, fair enough. But then you would admit they're not physical? I'm not trying to trap you. You just really said not. you really just not. said that some arguments are they're physical because they come from a physical reaction, uh-huh. and that's your okay. Gotcha. Okay, got you. Well, uh, and some would say they're not physical. Here's what I meant. Let me What's clarify your that. What's point? How Let is this an argument that. against atheism? Well, first of all, it, it's it's ad hoc because first of all, immaterial things aren't gonna uh, something like mind is not gonna come from matter. And I would refer you to Thomas Nagel, who is one of the best atheist philosophers there is, okay. who wrote an entire book about this. Because if all you have is physical stuff mixing with physical stuff, then you're not going to get non-physical stuff coming into existence like mind. Okay. So if I – now, if at best, what you can get is structural properties, and that's a fancy way of saying if I turn a b- pile of 10 boards into a raft, then it now has a property of being a raft. Sure, but that came from the structure. Now, you can't tell me that a belief arises from a structure. That's simply – that's – that's simply impossible. That's like saying I can rearrange the furniture in my house and on that get the color blue. Or I can rearrange yeah, a red no, brick I house and get... I don't get, agree with that get, at all. I, me neither. Okay, I so don't what, how is this an argument against atheism? How, well, how, uh, how is this evidence for a soul? I mean, what are you getting at well, here? I, well, I haven't gotten that far yet, but at least so far we can say that if all you have is a naturalistic process of physical stuff happening to physical stuff, at best, you get more complicated physical stuff, but you don't get mind. So if mind exists, and if atheism implies naturalistic evolution, and based on this, it would prove natural evolution, 
naturalistic evolution is false, then atheism must be false as well. How did you jump by an epistemic from chain? a mind from a mind existing okay. to naturalistic evolution yep. suddenly being false? Eric, we literally have hundreds and hundreds of fossil records and evidence to prove <laughs> naturalistic evolution. Okay. Why would you say that because a mind... I know my listeners are losing their minds right now hearing you go are from... They? they don't have minds. The, losing their mind. It's a figure of speech. Yeah. Because of this concept that you're saying just because there's some physical property that we can't see happening, mm -hmm. suddenly you jump to the uh, naturalistic evolution being false. Yeah. Where are you getting May that mm -hmm. evolution is false when we it, it's it's a it's a proven scientific fact that naturalistic evolution is the mechanism by which human beings evolved that if someone doesn't believe in that, they are just simply denying the evidence. That's not a matter of debate. That's mm -hmm. not an argument. Wow. There is a there are mountains of scientific evidence for for, for naturalistic evolution. OK. Let me clarify what I mean by naturalistic evolution, which I do in the book, and maybe I should have started with that. Um, naturalistic evolution being the idea that evolution happened without a god or design or or assisted which, yeah, guided process. Right. Right. Unguided. So you can't. So you can't. You can't say science proves that there's no god because that's essentially what you would be saying. I never said that. I know. That's why I'm saying you. I you, never we're said that we've proved that I, there is no god. I'm telling you that your I argument. Finish my statement. That your argument to me. That because mm -hmm. a, someone can call your collection of thoughts a mm -hmm. mind, that somehow that disproves evolution. Oh, oh, hold How on. do you jump uh, to that? It, I qualified it by calling it naturalistic evolution. What's which the means, difference? I told you, one's guided by God. Because oh, you could be a theistic, theistic ev evolution. Right, right. Oh, okay. Okay, so we're on the same page there, right? Unfortunately. Oh, I know, I know. I, I think I'm that's not an atheist. concept is so, uh, absurd. But. Yeah, okay, fair enough. But my point is... You can't say that science proved that God didn't guide evolution because that's not even a scientific question. So my only point is when I well, say naturalistic evolution, I mean that this would disprove that physical stuff cannot bring about physical uh, immaterial mind, which is what Thomas Nagel says, which was a lot of other philosophers say. And, and it's, it's a perfectly acceptable position, but then they become ad hoc and try to come up with these theories in a desperate attempt to save the belief that there no, was no I, God. Look, I, Eric, I am perfectly fine with saying when you get into mind and cognition, mm -hmm. and my background, my education was psychology. Okay. I'm very well aware that, that cognition is a mystery to a lot of people. I'm fine with that. <sighs> but here's the difference, Eric. Mm -hmm. I'm fine with mystery in my life. I don't just stop and go, God did it. Mm -hmm. That's a God of the gaps mm -hmm. argument. So okay. the fact that atheists have mystery in their lives, or... Mm -hmm. This particular atheist you happen to be talking to is not a philosopher on par with Daniel Dennett, and I can't mm -hmm. articulate it as well as maybe some of my listeners can. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean I should abandon and accept a theism because I have mystery in my life. Just like right. if I were to stop one of one of uh, a Christian on the street and say, hey, why would Adam and Eve have belly buttons if they were the first people created? And they go, oh. That's a weird question. I go, bam! You should be an atheist. Well, hold on. Come on. No, now. wait, no. You should you should abandon Christianity because let, you don't have that answer. Let me give my come on here if I can. That's a naturalism of the gaps, David. And now you're appear appealing to mystery, which is what religious Christians do. I'm not appealing to mystery. Oh, yes, you are. No, I'm telling you that I'm not going to completely accept your deity, which I do not believe has sufficient evidence. I haven't defended cannot, deity. I know, but I'm telling you I cannot accept that, which would make me stop being an atheist. Mm -hmm. I can't abandon atheism and accept your God because I don't know uh, the the, the properties of mind versus a thought versus cognition versus physicality of brain properties. I can explain it to you. That philosophers have debated for years. Sure. So because I don't know the let's, answer to that question, I should abandon atheism? No, no, no. I, I, no what's I'm your not, point? No, no, no. I'm not saying it's a mystery. You're saying it's a mystery. I'm not. I'm not saying it's a mystery. We should, therefore, God. I would say that you are giving a naturalism of the gaps. And where, in other words, where a Christian says God works in mysterious ways, it sounds like you're saying naturalism evolution works in mysterious ways. I'm not which saying is not that at all. Okay, fair enough. But, it's but I'm not, not what saying, I'm saying. I'm not saying it's a mystery at all. I, I'm saying, given from what we know, it's not an argument from ignorance. It's saying, given what I do know, not what I don't know, then this doesn't fit on a naturalistic evolution perspective. And if naturalistic evolution comes from atheism, then based on this chain of beliefs... Oh, it doesn't. Oh, okay. It doesn't come from atheism. It's the other way around. What is that? That when, when people are creationists, uh -huh. they grow up in a Christian household... Uh, genetic fallacy. Let me finish. Okay. 
when Christians grow up in a theistic household and they become and they're creationists, they are taught creationism. Then they get older and go to a high school biology class and learn that dinosaurs existed 65 million years ago, mm-hmm. and we find out early hominids and Australopithecus afarensis, and then you get onto these detailed of all these different patterns of human evolution. And they go, wait a minute, if we have all these different species over 250 thousand years, and we can show lineage and that we share 98.8 percent of our dna with chimpanzees and then we can connect that we have a gorilla ancestor from three million years ago and seven million years ago and we can connect it all and go wow when we look at the skulls they're nearly identical and compare the dna that person goes wait a minute maybe god didn't make man out of dirt and then make eve out of his rib maybe i need to abandon this mythical fable and accept scientific evidence that's what i'm saying eric is that there are ma- there's mountains of evidence supporting naturalistic evolution. So you can't, and, and then at that point, that person could go, you know what? I'm no longer a creationist. I, I am now a theistic evolutionist. Mm-hmm. And then they continue looking into it and go, wow, this Bible this, the Bible that. I'm abandoning it. Atheism, Eric, and this is very important. Atheism comes way after the fact mm-hmm. when someone's looked into the evidence and went, I was raised as a believer, but in, in, in light of all this evidence, I'm going to abandon the Christian worldview, and I don't believe that anymore. And when they mm-hmm. lack that belief in that deity, they become an atheist. You just said, if naturalistic evolution comes from atheism, no, you can't stack it backwards. You're putting the cart before the horse and trying to disprove something that comes from a basic understanding of evolution. Okay. Evolution does not come from atheism. Right. Again, you have to remember what I qualified by saying naturalistic. I'm saying godless evolution. So, of course, if you're an atheist, you're not going to believe God worked through evolution. So, clearly, okay. I, that, that's what I mean but by that. that doesn't mean it comes okay. from it, though. It, 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 what I, epistemic chain, one belief sometimes. Sometimes belief A implies belief B. Belief B implies belief C. Now, if you disagree with that, that's fine. We, that, I, I don't want to waste time on that. So, and I want to clarify this. I'm not per se, arguing against evolution. So you could, in other words, I could agree with you and say, sure, evolution is true. For the sake of the argument, I could say, sure, evolution is true, but I'm a theistic evolutionist, you're a naturalistic evolutionist. And that wouldn't do anything to affect what I've been saying at all. That would not hinder I still don't understand, and I think the listeners don't understand, how that would be an argument against atheism. Well, let me explain it. If it would, first of all, Showing that mind cannot come from matter, then you have no way for accounting for mind. And if you say it's a mystery, then you're, you're doing nothing more than what the religious Christians do by saying God works in mysterious ways. But well, what is mind? It's a consciousness has five mental states. It's something that we define ostensibly just like when you say, what is purple? I'm not going to give you a definition. I'm going to point to it. So to define consciousness, I point to instances of consciousness. There are five states of consciousness. You have uh, thoughts, beliefs, sensations, um, uh, desires, and acts of will. So I'm not saying it's a mystery. I can explain it all those day. Just, we can talk about it. Those are just it. thoughts. No, no, they're not all thoughts because based on the law of identity, I can show you they're different. For example, why is a thought not the same thing as a belief? Because I can have uh, beliefs I'm not thinking, but uh, uh, but I don't have thoughts. Uh, I could have beliefs I'm not currently thinking, and I can think things I don't believe. So they're two different things. So. Okay. So uh, all I'm saying is, yeah, sure, we can. I can explain consciousness. There's five different states of it. Well, you can define it. That's not sure. explaining okay, consciousness. Fa- fair enough. Fair enough. I can define and and explain to you what is consciousness. Is what I meant. Okay. Um, so, again, going back to that is at least on my worldview, I can account for this because if there's mind now, then there had to be mind somewhere in the beginning. So in the beginning was the mind, and I would say, why, God, why do you jump what? to? Why do you just assert be, that no, fact? No, no. No, no, I don't Why assert- do you just assert okay. that if there's mind now, there had to be a, had to have been mind before? Well, because if you don't, then you're going to have to go into something like Thomas's Nagel position and saying that mind is in everything, every piece of matter, which is absurd. Could it have not evolved? How would, uh, go ahead, please explain that. I would love to hear how mind how, would evolve. How could consciousness yes. evolve? That's what I'm saying. Could, no, yeah, couldn't that's consciousness your, have that's, evolved? That's your burden of proof. I don't know. You tell me. No, I, no, 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 no. You're telling me that uh-huh. that's a failure of atheism. Yes, it is. And I'm asking... If you're if you're touting that as proof against uh-huh, my worldview, right. what I'm saying is, how do you know that <laughs> consciousness didn't evolve just like uh-huh. compassion, I'll, I'll just like compassion mm-hmm. evolved, like uh, morality uh, evolved? No. Sure, Th- that's a separate argument. We can, uh, uh, but it's similar. I'm saying mm-hmm. that they they these these are things that yeah. we have in our society that have evolved. How do you know? That consciousness and mind and thoughts and ideas and all these different things, mm-hmm. how do you know that wasn't part of right. the evolutionary process? Well, first of all, f- 
first of all, if you think that, you would have to bear the burden of proof. Because otherwise, it's like a Christian saying, well, prove to me God doesn't exist. You're essentially saying, prove to me it didn't evolve. That's I'm your burden, not, not what mine. I'm saying. Hold on, that's I'm just one point. asking you how you know that. Mm-hmm, okay, right. And my second point would be because mind cannot come from matter. You cannot get, you cannot rearrange matter and get an immaterial property. At best, you get a structure property. I cannot rearrange a red brick house and then get the color blue from that. You cannot rearrange billions and billions of neurons or electrons or atoms or quarks or anything like that and then expect to get consciousness popping into existence. J.P. Moreland, a guy, one of my favorite philosophers, says it's like pulling the rabbit out of a hat, uh, uh, the, the hat being complicated matter and the rabbit being immaterial, immaterial properties, minds, and states. But you can't get an immaterial rabbit from a physical hat unless no, there was an immaterial rabbit there to <clears throat> begin with. Yeah, that's a straw man. I think no, all, all of these, all the, all of the, all the, 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 the rabbit thing, the house analogy you keep doing, I agree with those. Mm-hmm. Those are simple. Those are easy to <laughs> knock down. This is simple. But let me ask you this. If evolution was true mm-hmm. and there was no God, it was okay. unguided evolution, right. isn't it possible that... We developed and evolved brains that then were able to produce thoughts. And now as those thinking beings were going, wow, this is really strange. Mm-hmm. How does my physical brain produce an immaterial idea or right. that I can't grab or hold? Wouldn't that be possible? Uh, I would say, first of all, I would, uh, I would say, no, I don't think it's metaphysically possible is what I would say. Metaphysically? Yes, metaphysically possible. It's like because, hold on, because again, you're going, I think, I think you're going back to, when a Christian says God works in mysterious ways, you're saying evolution works in mysterious ways, and we don't know. And you're saying no, if God didn't exist, well, let's pretend God doesn't exist. We're conscious. Ah, well, then it must be natural. No, no what I'm saying is you continue to create a false dichotomy. No. You are you are you. This is the fallacy of the excluded middle. You are saying can't have we can't have mind mm-hmm. from matter. Period. Well, how do you know that to be true? How do you know that that you can't get? that mind or thoughts right. or, or, or immaterial ideas okay. from physical things. How do you know that matter is, and you're saying that I'm putting the burden of proof on you. Yep. What I'm telling you is it's an excluded middle. It's something you're not considering as part of your argument. You're saying either there is a deity that has put, mi- that, that, that mind began all of this stuff, mm-hmm. or what is your other, or I mean, that's all you're saying is the only option is <sighs> that God put this forward, right? And if you, if you, be- if you believe that evolution is where this stuff came from, mm-hmm. Then you're clearly wrong, and you should accept no, theism. No, that's what you're saying. Because first of all, you're saying, "Was well, it possible?" Well, I don't know. Like you said earlier, you can only believe things you can demonstrate. So demonstrate to me that it's possible. That would be your burden. That's not the way it works. Second, it sounds like you're saying, "Well, it's possible, therefore I don't need God." Well, you can't just, you can't just. That's ad hoc. You're making things up to save your view. You're making things up to reject the, any kind of conclusion. My only point, point so far has been. That if this is the case, then we cannot get mind from matter. Well, if we do have mind, then where did it come from? At that point in the chapter, that's my only. That's my, the only point. And I there. think you. I think your fallacy there is you've stated the fact you can't get mind from matter. Show me that it with, can without knowing it. The point is you've made a statement. Listen, yep. if I say to you, mm-hmm. I know for a fact this God doesn't exist. Then I have the burden of proof. Okay. But if I say it's silly for you to believe in that God because uh, this random fact over here, you can say prove to me that that would disprove God. Then I would have the burden of proof in that. But that's not what I'm saying. <sighs> you have come to me with an argument, mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. I believe that your argument is a false dichotomy. Sure. And with, the, with this giant excluded middle of all these other possibilities. And what I'm saying is, this is a bad argument for you because you're ignoring so many things that are in the middle. Okay. Uh, first of all, I know I'm not, because we can go through all five views of physicalism, the reductive and not reductive. So no, I'm not excluding these. I am showing that given, uh, and again, I'm jumping over a lot of stuff that I write in the book. So for the sake of time, which I'm running out of quickly. Um, is this the part of the argument that gets to soul? Well, no, the next chapter is free will and then soul, but we can do both at the I, same time. I thought time. that you were setting all of this up to get to yes. a yes. soul right. situation. Yeah. So do you want to make that argument in the last six minutes for the podcast Oof. listeners? Wow. Okay. Uh, okay. In a nutshell. I would say this. If all you are is physical things and you can't have libertarian free will, you cannot. Because first of all, two conditions for libertarian free will. The first is that you have to be the originator of your actions. You have to be the first mover. The second is known as dual ability, which means you should be able to do or refrain from doing something, uh, to will or refrain from willing. And if you don't have those two conditions, you cannot have free will. If physicalism is true and all we are are physical meat machines and objects, then everything that you do is caused by prior physical events. 
uh, that would be known as determinism. So if that's true, then if you're an atheist and that leads to physicalism and you have no soul, then you have no free will, which means, first of all, your belief in atheism isn't a rational intellectual belief since it was caused by something else. Second, no one can be held morally responsible for their actions. So you cannot say that a Christian beating up an atheist is evil if he's not responsible for his actions, if he does not have the free will not to do it. Then I would go on to say, God, this is no, so bad. This is it just is. fallacy That's on top it of is, fallacy uh, on top of fallacy. I would love for you to prove that in oh a little God. bit. I, and then the soul would be that if there is free will, then there's a soul. And why? Because you would have to be the first mover. And if atheism is true, you can't get there. And then we can go into other beliefs, uh, other arguments for the soul. Say what you said again real quick. You, you said <clears throat> you, you lost me right at the, if you're only physical, mm -hmm. and then you turn that into somehow moral judgment and not no f free will how yes how yes. is it that if we're only physical beings we have no free will right um because first of all if atheism is true let's consider the ex existence of the universe from the perspective of an atheist there everything was a result of a physical process okay which would be safe to assume that the law of causal closure is true which is the view that every physical event has a physical cause if every physical event has a physical cause and if you decide to, quote unquote, decide to lift your arm up, that was caused by something in your brain, which was a physical event. And if that's a physical event, then it must need a physical cause. Which now, doesn't mean, mm, we didn't, but it doesn't mean we didn't evolve the ability to have something in our brains that gave us the ability to control that thought. Right. You mean like a soul? <laughs> no, something in our brain. It doesn't mean that we haven't evolved something in if, our brain. If it's physical, it this has what to I have mean a by physical the cause. Right, the physical cause could have evolved within our brains that gives us the ability to make decisions. And, and then what, 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 okay, explain that to me, please. Bec well, can I finish my explanation of that? Uh, uh, sure. Okay, if you raise your hand right now, retort question, was it free or not? Um, well, you would say, okay, if it's a physical event, it needs a physical cause. You would say a brain firing in my brain caused my hand to go up. And I would say, okay, what caused that brain firing to fire? Well, you have a few, two options, essentially. One, you can keep saying brain firing till the cows come home, but then you'll never get to the action. Or you can, or eventually what you have to do is say physical events prior to this brain firing happen that were outside of my body and control, which caused me to do this, which means you are not the first mover to your actions, which means you cannot have free will. Yeah, so there are atheists who argue that point all the time with each other. Dan mm -hmm. Dennett debates, or not really debates publicly, but argues with Sam Harris on that. And uh -huh. I've had Dan on the show... And he says he doesn't even like the word free will. He calls it something <coughs> else and goes into this whole concept of why, how we make, I believe so. Mm -hmm. It's something about making your own decisions through compatibilism sure. and things like right. that. So, I, so I, my, my, my point is just because, <coughs> here's the thing, through evolution, we could have developed a piece of physical brain matter that gives us the ability to make a decision to do something. So telling me, saying that, if you're only physical, you cannot have free will is a false dichotomy. It's no. the fallacy of the excluded middle because you're ignoring the fact that we could have evolved something that allowed us to make decisions. No, because like I've explained, this is not an argument from ignorance. Like I've explained, if it's something physical, then it has a physical cause. And if it have a physical cause, your best candidate for the first mover is not you. You literally have to go back past your existence, past your birth, all the way to the Big Bang, just like a line of dominoes. The hundredth domino was caused by the first. So even if that hundredth domino felt like falling, it wasn't free because it was caused by dominoes 99 through yeah, 1. Yeah, I don't disagree with that. Well, there's no free will. <laughs> it doesn't mean that there's no free yes, will. Yes, because that's a condition for free will. You you're have to be only, the first mover. You're only saying, again, it's a false dichotomy. You're, you're, uh. you're, you're ignoring the fact, you're excluding the fact that we could have evolved something that allowed us decision-making abilities. Now, I say we have something that does that. It's called the soul. Let's get into that next. Can we, whatever you're going to, wh what was the next thing you said? Uh, well, free will, well, there's another condition for free will, but we can skip that and go yeah, to the Yeah, let's soul. get, let's get out of that because I, well, we're, I, we're just going to talk past each other because <laughs> I, I think, again, you, it's my favorite, I, I, I think these will. things, you have a logical line of thinking that you're going to, Thank and then you. at some point you make a jump and go, therefore this, and I go, wait a minute, there are other possibilities, and then you say, <sighs> prove those other possibilities are true. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not the way it works. Yeah. You are the one making the jump and saying, if this, then that, and I'm saying, I'm not making an argument to say, here's something to consider. Actually, all I'm saying well, is, here's something is to consider. I'm not saying... 
this is why you're wrong. I'm saying this is a false dichotomy. You have not, you're excluding a whole bunch of other information that you're not considering. We're going to take this to the extended show. Join us at login.dogmadebate.com. The camera's still rolling, and it's happening right this second. So if you're listening after the fact, you can uh, download this entire show without commercial breaks. Um, but join us right now at login.dogmadebate.com, and uh, we're in the chat room as well. So um, other than that, like I said, tomorrow's show is going to be uh, an abortion debate, an atheist versus yes. uh, an atheist, uh, pro-life, pro-choice, and that's going to be streaming for members only, and that's going to be the actual show out there for next week. So um, as always, the conversation continues at login.dogmadebate.com. We'll see you next time. Welcome back to Dogma Debate, and thank you for the support, all you fourth listeners out there uh, signed up here. Um, I wanted to say something. I think I know, um, I, I want to be clear about something. And, and I, think I, why, I think I know why people don't normally do this, why they don't say, hey, just come in and, uh, and attack atheism and I'll defend it. Uh, and this is why I normally don't take debates where I have the, the, the positive. Now, this Saturday with Matt Slick, I am, I'm saying, the God of the Old Testament is a moral monster and I have to provide evidence for that. But... The reason people don't do this is because here's the circle of events as to what happens. Um, I'm not an atheist because I've determined that all of these other things are better than Islam or Christianity, Mm -hmm. right? I'm an atheist because those religions, I believe, are lacking in sufficient evidence. Mm -hmm. So let's say... Let's say I didn't know how to argue any of this stuff. Let's say I didn't understand evolution. Mm -hmm. Let's say I didn't understand methodological naturalism. Let's say I didn't understand physical properties. I didn't understand mind. I didn't understand psychology. If at the end of the day I say I'm an atheist and you say I'm going to come in your studio and attack atheism and I'm going to prove to you why atheism is illogical. Mm -hmm. And you ask me how does evolution work? And I go I don't know. And you say, ah, well, then how does the mind work? And I go, I don't know. And then you say, well, according to, uh, you know, unguided naturalistic evolution, then uh, this is the way evolution should work. And I go, yeah, okay, that that sounds right. And you go, so it's self-refuting, so you shouldn't trust yourself to be an atheist. And then I go, you're right, okay, that's fine. Even if you were right about everything you've said, if I turn over and go, well, okay, Eric, uh, if atheism is wrong, what should I be? Mm-hmm. And then you say, Christian. And I go, well, why? And you say, why? well, because this God man made himself mm-hmm. be born of a virgin so that he could grow up and die as a sacrifice back to himself for sins he allowed you to create through temptation. And, blah, blah, blah. and I go, well, that sounds ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Guess where I am? I'm back to atheism. Mm-hmm. And then a Hindu shows up and says, actually, Lord Krishna. And I go, I don't believe that stuff either. I'm back to being an atheist. Right. So my ignorance or any atheist ignorance on any one topic mm-hmm. does not mean that atheism is a bad argument. People don't become atheists because they have positive reinforcement by atheism. It's not a belief system. It's not a religion. It's not something we stand up and go, atheists believe X <clears throat> and atheists believe Y. And this is what we think our religion is better than yours. People become atheists because religions fail at demonstrably proving their deity exists. That's why people become atheists. Not because we think we've set up some worldview that answers every question you could have. Okay. I just want to be clear about that. Like, even if Uh, I knew how to... uh, Like, if you were to run into some... (laughs) <laughs> Let me use this term, lay atheist, who doesn't debate this stuff all the time. They're mm-hmm. just like, yeah, I don't believe that stuff. Sure. And you challenge them with all this, and they're like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And they know nothing about evolution, mm-hmm. nothing. Gotcha. At the end of the day, they go, okay, then what should I be? All if right. your belief system sounds absurd to them, they're going to be an atheist whether they know that stuff or not. Okay. Um, well, first of all, if... <laughs> And, and I guess this would be. I really don't want to go here because I don't want to waste time on this. I'd rather get back to the we're, arguments. We're, we're much. We're we're, not, we're out of the time we're, restraint uh, thing. Well, this is this still. is a much more relaxed portion of the show. Yeah. It, if for some reason that makes it relaxing. This yeah. picture of the of mountains <laughs> that God created and everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyways, um, uh, if 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 someone's an atheist and they read my book and they say, you know what, atheism can't be true. 
I've done my job. Uh, and they say, what should I be? And I say, well, if you can now concede that atheism, admittedly, being the belief that there is no God, is not true, yep. then now, as a rational person, it is now your intellectual duty to go find out which one is. But what you cannot do is fall back on atheism as an excuse because you don't like a religion. At best, you could say, okay, you know what, God exists, but gosh, he's whatever the case. But the point is, at the very least, I, if I can accomplish, well, really, the more modest goal of my book is to put a pebble in the atheist's shoe, to make his walk a little uncomfortable and saying, gosh, I didn't know that if being an atheist kind of led to a belief that there's no free will, which I haven't fully unpacked yet. Uh, and, and I didn't know, gosh, if, 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 if I'm an atheist, and I don't want to go, I don't even want to say it because I know you, you'd want to go here, but we've it's been talked so much because i want to stick to free will but gee i didn't know if i was an atheist and there is no ontological foundation for morality or if if, if uh, i'm an atheist then you know what what do i do with consciousness and i say that so that if at least i can get that in there then now now let me step in off the antagonistic atheist thing the anti-atheist view and let me step into my christian shoes and put on the preacher hat and here I'm just being transparent. Then at this point, the only thing I can do is say, you know what, you're absolutely, you, you know what, I, I'm glad you see this. So I'm going to be praying for you because you can't just choose to. Okay, now I'm just going to be a Christian. I understand that. I completely understand. Do that. you think people choose to be atheists? <sighs> yes, and, and we can go there in a little bit. I thought you can said. I, I, I thought I that. The, I thought uh, that. Just I just want to quickly say I thought that because you said. You can't fall back on atheism right. as though someone would intentionally go, well, I'm going to choose to go back to atheism because right. I don't no. believe them. So I do want to talk about that in a moment, okay. but I want to let you uh, Yeah, okay, thanks. Um, so here's what I would say is, you know what? Now you have this defeater for your belief or for your worldview. I don't know, you don't, you don't like that term, fair enough, but I would say now you have a defeater for your worldview, and now I'm going to pray that God, that God speak to you, the Holy Spirit revealed things to you, because now you are in a position where you have no intellectual objection. Uh, again, assuming they... They can see what I'm saying. You only have emotional objection at best, which is nothing I can change. I cannot change your emotional objections. So now I'm going to pray for you that, yeah, you find the truth because that's ultimately what I'm about is I stand for truth. And, of course, I believe all truth comes from God. So I'm going to be praying that, yeah, their hearts and minds are changed. I had a debate with Matt Dillahunty on the soul, and I had an atheist after the debate come up to me and say, can I ask you a question? I said, sure. He said, uh, can I be an atheist and still believe in the soul? Because... I came in here not believing in a soul. I am now leaving believing in the soul because of what you said. But can I still be an atheist? I said, consistently no. And I explained it a little bit. And then he kind of walked around. His, he walked. He shook his head and said, well, I don't agree with that. And he walked away disappointed. But that gave me some hope because now I say, well, you know what? Gosh darn it. Yeah, he's not now he's not a Christian and he didn't bow at the feet of Jesus. But wow, now he has a defeater that I'm going to pray the Holy <coughs> Spirit bugged the hell out of him, literally. And and just you know shake him up, and I want him to come to the truth. I want him to seek truth. But but again, do you see the false dichotomy there? Not at all. That if you don't have a soul, or if you believe in a soul, you can't be an atheist. Well, you say it's a false dichotomy because I haven't finished explaining. I can give you the reasons, and then you would have to tell me why my reasons are false. Well, I, well, I think we can skip all that. I'm just ask you a question. Go ahead. Couldn't someone be Wiccan and believe that they have an eternal soul that sure. some other god? Sure. Well, okay. So, would wait? Would but you, then they're not. Well, okay. Could someone be a spiritual Buddhist mm -hmm. that doesn't worship a godhead, which means right. they are an atheist uh, uh -huh. that believes in reincarnation? Yeah, I'll say this. You can believe there are a There are Buddhists yeah. who yes. are atheists mm -hmm. who believe their soul is reincarnated. So telling mm -hmm. this young man that he cannot believe in a soul well, and be an atheist okay. is a false dichotomy. Well, hold on. Let, let, me, let me clarify. Uh, note, I said he asked, I said not consistently. There's, like I said in the beginning, there's a difference between believing something as an atheist and then believing something that is logically consistent with an atheism. And that is, I'm going to be really transparent here, that is a problem I have with most atheists. They don't know the arguments, and they don't know where a lot of things come from. They just assume them to be true and then claim, I don't need God for it, and completely miss the arguments and confuse the arguments, have no idea what the root of the arguments are, and go off into red hearings and argue stuff I don't even say. So, that being said... Sure, you can be an atheist and believe in the soul, just like I've heard of, like you said, there's a guy who said he was an atheist, but he's a Christian or believes in God, whatever the case is. You could believe whatever you want. I'm not concerned with what people want to believe. I'm concerned with what is logically consistent and rational within a person's worldview to believe. So you don't think it's logically consistent for a Buddhist who is an atheist to believe mm -hmm. that their soul is going to be reincarnated as another creature? Absolutely not. 
how is that any different from your Mm-hmm. All right, I don't want to. I mean, right, I, 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 don't, I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to attack your Christianity. <laughs> no, no, I, please, please. Well, please, no, I mean, the whole the whole point of the show is for you to attack atheism. So okay. I, I'm going to give you the floor to go back to your argument. You're such a nice guy, really. No, I, just, I don't mean that condescending. I really mean that. Like, I really respect that you're doing this. I mean, like, yeah, no I, I really do. No uh, you're you're Santa guy, really seriously. Thank you. Um, but but I do. Uh, let me go ahead. But I, I, let, let me at least touch that because again, if you can't get mine from matter, and if there's no reason to suspect immaterial things exist, then there has to be. Uh, what you would call a founda- an ontology from where they come from. And there is simply, and, and don't get me wrong, Thomas Nagel, who's an atheist, he has said openly, I don't want God to exist. I don't want to live in that kind of universe. I don't believe in God. Okay. But then he says, but naturalism cannot account for everything, which is why he is what you call a panpsychist. He thinks, uh, and because and, and, he wants to find a way how to account for consciousness and, and all these other things without God. Good mm-hmm. luck to him. I'll pray for him about it. You know, hopefully he'll come up with something. But the point is, he says, okay, well, you know what? Matter, mind cannot come from matter. It therefore must be the case because we can't say God. So the only other option, Thomas Nagel, it must mean that conscious potentiality is in every single piece of matter in the universe. This table has the potential to be conscious, and given the right physical conditions, under the right circumstances, consciousness come will emerge. On. Well, hold on. That Wait. Well, this is absurd. funny. You know what? You're right, and I'll say two things to that. It does it does sound absurd, but one, he's he's trying to be consistent as an atheist, so I agree it sounds absurd. Two, oh, no. that's essentially what you said, David, that because you said, hold on, hold on, because you said, couldn't it have evolved? Which would be that if consciousness is not physical, then you're essentially saying the same thing, that matter with more matter, given the right circumstances and physical conditions, consciousness will evolve. That is natural matter. Sure. But he's he eventually would, millions of years down the line could a tree. I mean, there are you know that right now there are plants that will open up, put a little sugar excretion on the end of something intentionally to bait an insect. Mm-hmm. And then when the insect comes over, it slams on that insect and dissolves it. Mm-hmm. Well, we could argue that there's a there's a thought process there. There's an in, there's an intent. Okay. Right of this of this plant, yeah. so a tree maybe, which this table was made out of, mm-hmm. a tree could potentially, through evolution, have the ability to consciously mm-hmm. make decisions to stick something out to draw in prey. Yeah. Maybe we could argue that, but a table, well, a microphone, these mm-hmm. are these are things that are developing. Mean, this is probably even fake wood here. This this crappy table we're on, but but it's like particle particle wood crap. But but this is is still processed and it's it's a it's a thing now it's not like you could say carpet could someday develop consciousness carpet is a okay. synthetic material that human beings made so saying all matter once again is excluding the middle it's yeah. another false dichotomy well okay first of all, i don't want to defend panpsychism but i i do want to mention this so you conceded that living matter maybe could do that is that right potentially yeah potentially. i say it has okay. potential okay. yeah but not Non living matter, not like synthetic a table. things okay. that we create. Good. Yeah. Well, if, if I can say then, then you're not that far from Nagel. In fact, I, I would say in the long run, you agree. And l- l- let me unpack this. Remember, I said beliefs logically imply other beliefs, right? And that's why I went from starting with there is no God to everything I'm going to now, which I know it's okay. But see, if you're saying only living matter could possibly potentially, using quotations, mm-hmm. do that, but hold on, David. In the process of evolution, we didn't start with life. We start with non-living matter. So essentially, yes, you're saying that non-living matter will eventually become living and conscious, which is essentially what Thomas Nagel was saying. No, no, no. It doesn't become living. Uh, no, Eric. And once again, you've demonstrated you do not understand evolution. I would say the same thing. You don't understand it. Abiogenesis is not the same as evolution. Life starting is not the same as evolution. Yeah. Abiogenesis is not atheistic mm. in its mindset. Okay. It's just not. It's a different science. It's a different worldview. It's a different answer to a different question. Okay. Okay. I wouldn't say abiogenesis is a worldview, but what I'm saying is sure. you're, you're, you're taking all these things like <laughs> evolution and abiogenesis and calling that atheism and then arguing against those as though you're refuting atheism when that's not, that's not the same thing. No, I, didn't, I didn't say the same thing. I said some beliefs logically imply other beliefs, but... Okay. <laughs> I don't see how so so you think everything started with living things already that the big bang just popped out living things. No, I don't know. 
Okay, fair enough. My, my point sure. is that you arguing against that okay, right. isn't an argument against no, atheism. I, I, see, but see, one part of my argument isn't therefore atheism is false. This is a part of my argument that leads through a, a chain of beliefs and, and arguments that will eventually conclude atheism is false. So again, so far we're just talking about Okay, I am really want you to get to the soul thing. I really, I want to get to that. I, I haven't looked into it. Uh, uh-huh. The same challenges I had when I first met you, I uh-huh. still have that challenge. But I want to, sure. I want to, I, I intentionally didn't look into it. I want our conversation to be organic. Okay. But I want to get to that. I want to get to how okay. this, uh, that okay. you believe there's a metaphysical thing inside me called the soul. Okay. Uh, I, I feel like you're trying to avoid what I'm trying to say though, but uh, so let me just close What am I it. avoiding? I just, I, I don't want the listeners to get tired of us talking in circles. That's what Fair. I'm doing. It. True. I'm okay. not being a debater at this sure. point. I'm being a radio host gotcha. to say, gotcha. this is getting, Fair enough. Fair this is enough. getting boring. Okay. Well then I'll, I'll just say that, you know, we agree to disagree that I think that evolution doesn't start with living things and eventually living conscious things happen. So yeah. Evolution is once life well, started. <laughs> That's when evolution okay. can talk to us about why things are related. Okay. Evolution does not give us the answers to how life began. That is abiogenesis. Okay. There is a theory for it, but it is not the same theory as evolution. Okay. All right. Moving on. Um, the soul. And you're asking why I believe in the soul or why? Or Well, no. You're, one of your challenges was leading toward a soul mm-hmm, existing. Mm-hmm. And so I'm underst- I'm, I want to understand how that right. is an argument against okay. atheism. Right. So um, I, would, I would submit... That if consciousness exists and we have free will, then there must be a soul, among other arguments. But those two chapters, I have one chapter on consciousness, one chapter on free will, and then I say, okay, and then now let's talk about the soul with these things in mind. Because, see, someone like Sam Harris, who I mentioned in the book, writes a book called Free Will, where he argues that there essentially is really no free will. Right. Now, that troubles me for a few reasons. If you believe that there's no free will, then why would you publish a book assuming people can freely read it or are going to read it? <laughs> you have to assume that people are determined to buy it. Yeah. It, it, it blows my mind. Uh, atheists would argue. Hold on. Just because he says there's no free will doesn't mean he <laughs> believes in predetermination. Well, by a, well, you said that they're determined to buy it. Which, which okay. Let me, that, me, it, that implies mm, predetermination, and he's no, not a religious person. No, 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 no. Uh, let, me, let me explain these. Uh, uh, and his, his concept is that your own thoughts and decisions mm-hmm. are chemical processes sure. that you really had no control over. Right. I don't necessarily agree with him, by the way. Right. No, I, I, I remember you said something with Evan the other day or on, on the podcast, uh, which yeah. I liked, by the way. Oh, thanks. Um, no, I, when I say determined, I don't mean it religiously. I mean, uh, that there's, there's essentially two and then technically three views of freedom, free will. There's libertarian free will, which I, I hold to, that a person is free. They can do or not do, and they're the first cause of their actions. Um, determinism is the view, simply, which Sam Harris is a determinist, and, and so is Daniel Dennett, actually. They're just different versions of it. Determinism is the view that everything has a cause, essentially. right? There's nothing mysterious I- about when I move my arm up, being a reductionist, the atheist would say, yeah, I can explain that. I don't need a soul for that. That's a god of the gap, soul of the gaps. Fair enough. Okay, fine. Um, so determinism simply means that everything is caused by something else, a prior event or physical event. Now, there's a soft determinism, which is known as compatibilism, and that, that we'll, we'll get to that later, or, or if at all. So all I'm saying is, <laughs> if Sam Harris doesn't believe his free will, then gee, I wonder why he wrote the book trying to convince people that there is not, when he would have to assume that they would freely buy it. Well, when I get him on the show, I'll ask him that question. Please do. I'd love to. I will. I'll have a special question from Eric Hernandez. Yeah, Why the you. hell did you write this book? Thank you. Yes. Did you make a choice to come on my show, sir? Exactly. Exactly. I'll and give him hell for it. Exactly. Hell. And, and and here's the thing, too. And, and he's I been even... replying to my emails, and we're trying to set something up. That's oh, nice. What I'm saying. He's, awesome. We're communicating, and he's interested, yeah. but I don't know if, cool. how soon that'll happen. Okay. Mostly, he wasn't until Dan came on. <laughs> when Dan came on, I was like, ah, I got to get my, I got to get on there. I got to look at that show. Uh, yeah, it, it was part. You know what? I don't think it's out there. I, I, we'll, I didn't see it. It's um. So here we had a twenty-four hour broadcastathon, mm-hmm. and Dan was the first guest, and we did like awesome. an hour with Dan. So yeah. I think we'll take that clip, and we'll make it into a show so that people can hear Dan's whole thought on free will and determinism. Is that when you did that twenty-four hour one? Yeah, that was last year. Yeah, we're, oh, yeah. we're doing another one this year. Awesome. Yeah. Someone said it's like two dogma shows back to back. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because these damn things are so long. Yeah. yeah. So, any, anyways, uh, <laughs> and, and like, and Dylan. So, for, for Dave, what he was saying is a, a comedian. No illusions. What what he was saying. No, I mean the the comedian. He goes. Uh, he says, I heard David Smalley did a. He was condemn. You know, uh, commending us for doing, for raising, I think funds fi- fi- fifty one thousand fifty one thousand dollars or whatever, or 
whatever in in uh, in a matter of twenty four hours, and he's like twenty four hours of nonstop broadcasting. <laughs> Dude, that's almost like two back to back dogma debate episodes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh. He's just giving me hell. And he's like, if your podcast lasts longer than four hours, you should immediately consult a physician. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so he's the host of Scathing Atheist, by the way, for anyone who wants to go check that out. So, uh, Dillahunty, he, uh, on the debate, the free will come up, of course. And, and, and I find this with a lot of atheists, because there's atheists who see this. It's not just me making this up. I mean, Sam Harris agrees with it. And anyways, there's, so there's atheists who argue with me there's no free will. And I say, time out, please, time out. If there's no free will, then what's the point of debating? Because once you begin to debate with me that there is no free will, you automatically assume I have the freedom to listen and believe you. And change your mind. Exactly. I said the same thing when Westboro Baptist Church was on my show. Uh huh. They're well, Calvinist. Yeah. yeah. They're Calvinist. They're yeah. predeterminist, and they say that God... And so I'm asking Sam Phelps Roper, I'm going, why scream at people? Why mm, hold up signs? Right, why right. be so offensive? Right. If those people can never change their minds, and mm. if they're going to change their minds, they're going to do it with or without you holding up the sign... Why Why even bother? Mm -hmm. And all he said was, God's made your decisions for you, but that doesn't get you off the hook. Yeah. You're still going to hell for the stuff you're doing. Right. Like, that is such a screwed up world. Yeah, no, it is. But yeah. it's kind of consistent ah. with Exodus 12 mm. and God hardening the heart of the Pharaoh yeah. and then killing all of his babies. We well, can get there if you want. It's but but, so, but see, here, here, well... Okay, first of all, I'm glad you can see that it's, it's, it's kind of a screwed up view, right? To say yeah. there's no free will? Yeah, well, I, in, the, in the book, I argue that if you're an atheist, that's what it leads to. So, false dichotomy. Uh, no, not at you're, all. You're filled I with false could, dichotomies. Uh, you are. Well, and th that, that's what frustrates my listeners about, about Christians coming to the studio or, or having Christians on the show. Is you guys uh, like Blake and other people, you'll go, well, if this, then this, and if this, then this, and if this. Well, no. And we're going back to the first one going, wait a minute, uh, it's not just if then. Mm. There are seven different options here, and you're just going, if this, then this. <laughs> and you build, it's like to me building an apartment complex complex on a swamp mm. well, okay if i give you a math test and said two plus two equals what and i give you four options and you say it's a and i say oh, but what about the other three no see when it comes to logic you have to and i mean this in literal sense i mean you have to you know it is like an a plus b i mean two plus two kind of thing there's a formula in which you can show if something is logically consistent valid and sound and if you can put these what you would call propositions into mathematical formulas then the conclusion will necessarily be true if I it's... I agree. Okay, okay, then. But once you then have that if, answer, you can demonstrate that that is the only answer that makes sense. And what uh, you're doing, no. you cannot demonstrate mm -mm. that that's the only answer that makes sense. You no. jump from if, then this, mm -hmm. and you exclude the middle, all the other options that atheists are screaming at their radios right now, or at this point, their phones or computers, they're screaming this because, look, there's six different options here, and you're just going if oh. this, then this, and you're leaping. You're leaping. Well, well, first, I've left a lot out for the sake of time, um, because I would say, because uh, I, I don't know if you want, you, if you want me to stay on free will or what. I'm done with free will. I want to move on to the soul. Uh, I want you to get to okay. your soul thing. We can have you back. Okay. Are you coming up Saturday for the debate with yeah. Matt Slick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll be here. Are you um, coming, Dave? All right. Yeah. Um, okay, so the soul. So, again, this goes back to physicalism, um, which is the view that you're only physical. <laughs> Which one to start with? Well, again, uh, to, since we're on the free will, let me just end it with the argument from free will for the soul. Um, Aristotle gave this illustration. He said, if I move a rock with my staff, the staff moved the rock, my hand moved the staff, but what moved me? And Fair. I submit to you that if you're going to be have free will, then you have to be the first cause. And if you're going to be the first cause, there has to be something non-physical to you, namely your soul. So if there is free will, then there must be something immaterial that causes things and owns all the immaterial properties and states such as Can I pause and ask such a as consciousness. Yes. Let's say you were standing between myself and Dave. Mm -hmm. And you're facing Dave. Mm -hmm. You can't see me. And I push you mm -hmm. really fast and hard in your back. <laughs> you go flying mm -hmm. towards Dave and at the last second you turn your body mm -hmm. because you're athletic and awesome <laughs> and you go yeet and you slip by Dave yeah. and you don't hit him. Mm -hmm. You were not the first cause. Mm-hmm. But you had free will to turn your body and not hit Dave. <clears throat> Absolutely. So once again, that's an excluded middle mm -mm. to your sentence of saying, in order to have free will, you must be the first cause. No, I think that's a, a misconception on your part to understand what free will is. <sighs> free will is the ability to will or refrain from willing. So two things, if I can say to what you said. First of all, I agree with you. If you pushed me, I didn't have the free will to move. I agree. I wasn't the first cause. However, just because you can show or demonstrate 
that there's a lack of free will in one area does not automatically insinuate or assume now that's a false dichotomy that therefore there's no free will in any area. I know you just say that. I know you say that. No, but what I'm saying is if I pushed you and you just continued on and smashed into him, you could turn to me and go, I had no free will, dude. David pushed me. D- David yeah. Smalley pushed me. I didn't do that mm-hmm. to you. And he could be like, well, maybe you had a, a half a second. You could have turned your body, Eric. Maybe. Like you making the argument, hey, sure. I wasn't the first cause, so I had no choice in the matter. Uh-huh. Well, maybe something caused you, like evolution. Sure. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then yeah, yeah. we developed the ability to have free will somewhere uh, down the line. No. You were nodding your head for a second. Yeah, no, no. You were I, getting it until I said evolution, and then you were like, no, 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 no. I, I agree with the evolution. Okay. okay. But I'm, what I'm disagreeing with is that what I said earlier, if it's physical, then it needs a physical cause. Okay. Now, if it's evolution, then you have just dominoes, and there's You're no never free will going in to dominoes. get to the soul. We're never going to get there. <laughs> let me ju- well, let me just finish my argument with the soul. So all I'm saying is, uh, is, is that if there's free will, there's a soul because it's the only thing that can be a first cause. And all I said was your your uh, uh, counter example, if you will, uh, didn't prove there's no free will. It just proved that when you push me, I don't have free will because I'm not the first mover. Fair enough. That's fine. But that doesn't prove there's no free will. But you could develop free will along the process. <sighs> Agree or disagree. The when soul. I pushed you, you mm. developed. You didn't have free will to move. Yes. But you developed free will to avoid Dave. You're confusing free will with something else. Okay. There's no developing. So, I either have it or I don't. Okay. So I disagree, uh, and that's a false dichotomy. If my arm is tied down to the chair, do I have free will to lift it? Mm, no, not in that case. I say yes. Here's why. Because. Free will doesn't have to do with the ability to physically carry out your will. It oh, is simply you can go through the motion of lifting, but can, it's just not going to try. Move. You can want, you can desire. So okay, what's the point of that? That there's still free will. So even if you show me there's some constraints, that doesn't mean I don't have free will. And that's my only point. That's why I said you confused it. You know, I've used that exact argument. High five, Christian yeah. and atheist. <laughs> I've used that exact argument I when like people that. tell me that. Um. When they use that as an argument, they use free will as the argument for evil happening. Mm -hmm. And then I say, we don't have to have leukemia and children and eternal hellfire and car crashes that rip people's faces off and debilitating diseases. We could instead have um, sore throats, broken arms and stubbed toes. And they go, no, you have to have free will. And I go, wait a minute. Is there free will in heaven? Mm-hmm. I go, what do you mean? You know, have you heard me say this before? I to, have. I know where you're going. Is there free will in heaven? And they say, well, yes, it's paradise. Mm-hmm. Well, you can't. Can you choose evil in heaven? Oh, no. Everything's perfect in heaven. And now you've, you're trapped into this idea that God has a way to develop this utopia in heaven where you have free choices, mm-hmm. but you can't choose to be evil. And then I say, why didn't God just do that on earth? Okay. Right. So I've used that exact Maybe argument I to say the high, I, I prematurely <laughs> high five. Then no, no, because we agree on that that basic concept. <laughs> you you agree with it until it disproves your worldview, no, and then you go, oh, no, that makes no, me no, uncomfortable. No. I think the high five was there because, like J T. Everhard says, you can kick the building, you can pee on the building, but you can't jump over the building. But you still have free will. But you can will to. You can want to do it. Right. So that, that's my point. So being physically incapable doesn't mean I'm not free to will it. But going, if you, I can answer your free will question saying. about heaven, if you'd like, though, I would, I've never had an answer to it. Oh, fantastic! So, so go. that I've that's been satisfactory. Uh, Let me well, qualify. Fair, fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough. Okay. Um, yeah, absolutely. There's free will in heaven, and yes, you can do evil. You can do evil. Absolutely. In heaven. Yes. However, which is how Satan got kicked out of heaven to begin with. Sure. Lucifer. There you go. Exactly. And use that one. There you go. Yeah. You got some more ammunition yeah, there. Christians. Now, I got you. Now. <laughs> yeah. Well, not if you're talking to me. Uh, <laughs> uh, now. But but the question, of course, becomes why then why don't they do evil? And I'll say, well, that, that's they don't want to. There you go. There you go. Simple as that. But how do you know they don't? I'm want waiting to? for it. How do you know they don't want to? Well, I don't know, but I'm saying that's that that would be okay. For here's an illustration again. J.P. Morgan, love the guy, awesome guy. J.P. Morgan, I don't like Moreland. his. I don't Moreland. like his bank. <laughs> his, <laughs> his bank sucks. <laughs> this is the after show, by the way. It's not sponsored, so I can say that. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> let me ask you this: Do you have the free will to go outside and eat dog crap? Honest question. Of, you know, just, just. I, I, Sam Harris would say no, but yeah, I, I think well. I do. I think I do. Well, yeah. Sam Harris was determined to say that he had no other choice. <laughs> <laughs> you see my problem with saying I like no that. Yeah, I think we have the same issues with that. With so, that uh, so uh, exactly. You say <clears throat> yes. So why haven't you done it? I don't want to. There you go. Dog crap probably tastes bad. Perfect. So, why do people have free will to do that in heaven? Absolutely. Why don't they? They don't want to. That simple. But it doesn't answer the question as to why God didn't create us that way. Ah, here. well, perfect. Now now you have to ask, how do people get to heaven in the first place? If heaven is a result of, of what we do here, then the people who are in heaven 
already had this mindset, but people down here right. don't. So you can't. It's not the same. It's disanalogous. Right. No. 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 Because my my argument there is that Lucifer once was in heaven. Yes. Knows God exists, and that's another argument that I use this with when people mm-hmm. say God's not going to just show Himself to you because He wants you to have faith. And I say, well, in your belief, Lucifer mm-hmm. knows that God exists, yep. yet turned on him anyway. Yep. So God proving to me that he exists or showing up saying, look, I'm here. You're responsible now. You're accountable mm-hmm. is different. Same reason uh, mm-hmm. Jesus let Thomas touch his rib. Absolutely. It's the same concept, yeah, right? Another high five. Yeah, yeah. let's do it. Heck yeah. Is it premature? No. Which is why <laughs> Jesus that. isn't real. <laughs> uh, you do? No, I'm just kidding. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, you did that thing again. <laughs> <laughs> Damn you and your pr- premature undo high it. fives. Undo it, yeah. Und- undo the yeah. <laughs> You have to high five another Christian twice <laughs> to subtract. That's four. Yeah. Okay. Now, now you're no oh, longer high five in the atheist. Got the atheist juju off me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was my, scary. my argument there is that that Lucifer knowing that God exists didn't stop him from turning on him, so he could have still free will, knowing that 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 God sure. is real. And right. so, so that that's where I use that and say, why didn't God just create heaven here mm-hmm. and allow people to choose to go to hell gotcha. if they don't want to be with Him? Right. Period. Right. There is a hell. You can go there if you don't want to be with me, but this is a utopia. You can choose evil to a certain degree, right? And you can will things that aren't going to happen. You can mm-hmm. choose to murder someone in heaven. doesn't mean God's going to allow it to go through. Yeah. And, so and then, the question is, why didn't God just create it that way? And that's how mm-hmm. I argue that God well, is a moral monster. <laughs> I would say he did, and then uh, the first two people screwed it up. But that How would could they have screwed it up when they were perfect? Theological. Who said they were perfect? Perfect in what the, sense? The world was perfect and without sin. It's in the Bible. I don't know if it says without sin, but I mean, what do you mean by perfect? What, it, what was makes perf- you it was perfect and without God what? created the world and it was good. Uh, free will? Everything I would say free will is good. So what's what's the problem there? That Adam and Eve were supposed to be unable to do anything bad. Says who? Now that's a Calvinist position. And I know you're not a Calvinist. Mm, right. No, no, no. I'm just talking mm. about the Bible saying the world was without sin. So how did uh, someone choose he, against God? He said it was good. That's what he said. He said the world's good. So sin is good in the free eyes of God? Free will is good. Sin is good. Free will is good. So the ability to choose sin is good according to God. Well, he did Free create will. evil. No, no, no. God no, created evil, no, so he would probably no, no, think no, no. sin is good. No, no, no. You're, is God didn't create evil? No, sir. Well, let me, let me go whoa, back whoa, to... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Time oh, out. Oh, my God. Here God go. didn't create evil? Here we go. No. No, he didn't. So you disagree with the Bible? <laughs> nope. Isaiah forty five seven. Yep, he creates God, calamity. He creates calamity. Some yeah. some some translations <laughs> say that that's evil. Yeah, sure. He they says do. I created everything. He's bragging. I did the good, the bad, the disaster, and the some, peacefulness. Some Christians also say Calvinism is true. What's your point? So you disagree with the Bible? No, I disagree with that translation. Or, or well, that, what, what that is concept. calamity to you? Uh, well, okay. First of all, we have to. Oh, what man, is calamity? I don't, I don't, Just tell me what uh, calamity things that is. Things happen in the world. The natural things that happen in the world. Bad things that happen. In the world. Sure, Calam- no one's ever said enough. I had a calamity and I got a raise. Yeah, of course we don't use that biblical language, but you have to understand who it's written to and and what culture. If someone says gay or or something in this culture, it means something completely different in another culture. So you can't but take God a twenty first century uh, exactly. English American society Bingo. and use that on there. Bingo. Yeah. The bu- the Bible. We're gonna high five that uh, one. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> don't do it. Don't Dave's like, don't do it. Um, uh, the but, Bible. But let me go back the, to be, that. the Bible on, is man. limited to uh-huh. its culture, uh-huh. to its language, <laughs> because it was written That's by not people. What I meant. Gosh, that's not what I meant. It was written by people. So if it was actually inspired by a timeless uh, being, why would it be limited to the culture of its time? He's getting me to go there. Uh, no, I'm not saying it's limited. I'm saying if you read a book that was written thousands of years ago, then you cannot mm. read it with an American mindset. That's my point. Okay. So, going back to free will. Oh, God. Free will was good. I don't want to do free will. So, God is responsible for the fact of freedom, but not the acts of freedom. So, let's move on to the soul. Okay, the soul. If there's no soul, you're not the same person from one moment to the next. You're, you don't have an enduring self or I, which means you literally are a different person essentially almost every second. Here's why. There's no, there's no physical part of your body that I can point to and say, that's David Smalley. Because I can cut off your arms and legs and you're still David Smalley. Which means you being a person is not dependent on your physical makeup. Right. Now, have you ever seen my sandwich talk? No, I haven't. Why? Where are you going with that? No, I just, I wanted to know if you've seen it. There's a, it's... <laughs> He's going somewhere. No, there's a, there's, I did a, I, I, I literally did a full 45 minute talk on is a taco a sandwich. Oh, is a taco, I thought you said have a, 
It, yeah, oh, it, I thought you meant, have talk. you seen my sandwich, like an actual sandwich <laughs> talking? I was like, you think I have a talking sandwich? I was like, oh, where's You guys going? will believe anything. Well, okay. you're the one that comes up with the flying spaghetti monster, so a talking sandwich doesn't sound too <laughs> no. far fetched. No, I meant so, my hey. talk about sandwiches gotcha. is a taco with sandwich. Have you ever, <laughs> obviously you've never seen it or you would right. have known what. Yeah. <laughs> the way you did that with your hands, <laughs> only the people on video will be able to see it. <laughs> Eric's idea of the talking sandwich. Uh, Triune <laughs> spaghetti monster sandwich. Tell us to bring in my talking sandwich. I want to show Eric. <laughs> I want him to have the conversation with Eric instead of me. I'm out of here. Um, no, so I, I go into how we def- we, arbit- we arbitrarily define things. Sure. And that's all I was getting at here. Okay. Just, never mind. We got way off. Go yeah. ahead. So, anyways, so if you are the same person from one moment, moment to the next, then something has to ground your identity and ground your personhood. Why? That Why does something have physical. to? Why? Why does something have to ground your identity? Let me finish. Because if you are the same person from one moment to the next, then you have to have something that makes you you, your personhood. What is that? Well, if I take half your brain out, you're still a person. If I cut off your arm, you're still a person. I can keep going. Mm -hmm. It follows that your personhood and identity through change cannot be grounded in your body. So here's let me clarify with one more thing. Every seven to ten years, it's, it's allegedly said that we get completely new bodies. Our cells, cells replicate, right? Well, it's not all at once. That, f- no, it's of over course, that time sure. period. Fair things. enough. Doesn't matter. Point and it's is, not all the stuff on the inside either. It's it's cells. Well, it's skin cells. Well, I, I, I've, I've heard otherwise, but regardless. I mean, your bone doesn't well, deteriorate inside nah, you. Not, not deteriorate, but I mean, clearly a three-year-old skeleton is not the same as a 20-year-old. There's, there's something different there. Right. So there's different things, all I'm saying. So if The you, brains aren't always different. Go ahead. Well, I mean, you, 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 your, your neurons are constantly firing and creating new connections. I said so the brains the are always different from a three or a twenty. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, see, well, you yeah. have to understand though. When when you say brain, I'm thinking physical, not mind. So I don't think yeah. the brain thinks. The mind thinks. The mind uses the brain as an instrument. So that's why we. And I think that's word science. I'm issues. sure you do. Because the anyway, mind, the uh, mind doesn't exist. Mind isn't a thing. Go ahead. Really? Yep. There's Im- <laughs> there's immaterial properties that aren't the same thing as physical, so they can't be the same thing. So the law soul. Of identity. So the soul. So if let's you say free will again. <laughs> you say free will again. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm just I'm gonna do this. That's what happens when you say um, when you say free will. Just so you know, hmm. but that, that's a song called Undaunted. You know anything about that song, Eric? Uh, yeah, I uh, I helped write it, and that was me on the drums. Is that crazy, listeners? That <laughs> that's a Christian band. Yeah. I've been jamming it for like a week. Oh, dude, I've been thanks. checking it out. Awesome. Yeah, I mean that's, dude. Are, are they, they just freaked out. I know it's, it's hilarious. They're like, what are you? Because I'm laughing. He's like, are you gonna talk to the Christian? Or just I'm just gonna no, we're just gonna jam. We're just gonna, we're just gonna yeah. praise the Lord. No, yeah, because he said. <laughs> <laughs> because he said he, you sent me a message. You were like, "You're a drummer." I was like, "Yeah." You're like, "Check this yeah. out." I'm like, dude, that sounds a lot like a band I was in actually. Oh, sweet. We did it. Was it a band called Contortion? Old, old, old stuff. None of hmm. it's on YouTube. There, there is another band called Contortion before We've, YouTube existed. Yeah, before YouTube <laughs> existed. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I've got one video of me playing. When I was like 19 or 20. Uh-huh. It was a lot of fun. It was very similar to music. Sweet. So, See, right on. I love yeah, that. I love that stuff. It. You're uh, very talented. You're good. Oh, thank you. You're good. Seriously, thank you. Uh, yeah. Okay, so, so uh, say free will again, and that'll be the penalty. <laughs> I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm just gonna launch into a song. Well, I'm kind of narcissistic, so I don't mind hearing myself. <laughs> just gonna be like, in a, what was it saying? Free will. Free will yeah. 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 So, anyways, so um, okay, so if you are the same person from one moment to the next, then there has to be something that grounds your identity. I was going somewhere. Else. Oh, right. Okay, so let's say you committed a crime ten to fifteen years ago. Okay. And they just now found the evidence, and the officer says, "You coming with me? We got evidence. You did it." You say, uh, "Officer, come on, time out. <clears throat> that was a completely different person with different body." Was it me? Go find him. Good luck. He doesn't exist. I'm off the hook. Now, clearly that's absurd because you are the same person in the strict sense that you are still David Smalley. Right. Right. So what grounds that? It has to be the soul. And if you want, we can get into that. That's, that would be one argument. Another argument would be that you, your personhood is what you call indivisible. Give me, give me about 30 seconds to unpack this. Some, pro- <laughs> some properties are degreed. Uh, for the, for example, the property of being loud or, or sound can be higher or lower. So it can come in degrees. Mm-hmm. Some properties don't come in degrees. Uh, evenness is not a degreed property. That is to say that the number two is not less even than the number six. There, it, it either is or isn't even. Right. 
I submit that personhood is a non-degreed property, which means you either are a person or you're not. Um, because, and there's consequences to that mm, if you would say that otherwise. That sounds like an argument for equality. Absolutely, yes, absolutely. Like marriage equality. Well, that 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 wouldn't. What, wait, I, I'm no, talking about no, human. No. Uh, you sure? Equality as far as we're all persons tre- uh, made in the image of God. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Why not? Okay. All created Perfect. in the image of God. I'm the done. ability go. He's a Christian. The, the the ability to love and marry who you're in love with. Uh, we're not going to go there. What? No, I thought you. I thought you said we were all equal. Personhood is personhood. Yes, we're equal. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, we're you can equal. sit on the bus. You just can't sit here. Ah, uh, no, that's not what I said. I'm trying to figure out where even, you're going. I didn't with even this. make a statement. I think you're going on a red hearing. Oh, maybe so. Okay. Okay. I just thought equality meant equality. At least he admitted it. So I thought equality meant equality. Oh, so well, actually, I think you are kind of against abortion, aren't you? Against abortion? Yeah. No. No? You're okay with taking human life? Yet we're all equal. Huh. So you can sit on the okay. bus, you I'm just actually, can't live as long I'm as you're actually, in a womb. Uh, <laughs> no, that's not human uh, life, though. Ah, uh, really? So yeah. when is it? So it becomes. It's a degree yeah, property. That's, a, that's tomorrow. <laughs> that's for tomorrow's show. Yeah, no, I think that is a degree property. I really do think that is a degree, is a degree property. Up to that point. Up to that Because oh, it's not a person. Special yet. Pleading. It's not a no, it's a it's not a person, it's a fetus. It's a developing no. embryo. It's, so what does it become? A non person? No, it's not a person yet. Okay, then tell me that what are the qualifications for personhood? I don't know. Well then you can't how do you know it's not a person? Well, I don't. What uh, I'm saying is to me, a fetus is not a person with rights, and you and yet you have no basis for that. So you're believing something. And I'm that also, evidence. I'm also, are you in favor of the death penalty? Uh, yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, absolutely, sure. Wow, that's crazy. To How? Me. So when when you're you're comparing innocent life that hasn't taken its first breath outside of the womb with a criminal who's raped and killed forty women? No, really? no, 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 really, no. Some people are 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 innocent. That We're are not killed. talking about that. Okay, then sure, innocent people dying is wrong. No, but what does that have to do with one the of the arguments for the death penalty? Is that sometimes mistakes are made, so you don't do it at all. Okay, so that to oh, avoid nah. innocent people being killed. Yeah, my here. my problem is. This whole concept of pro-life. Uh-huh. You're not really pro-life. Oh, you're pro- sure I am. No, no, You're no. pro-fetus. No, no, no. You're pro- no. Are you conservative politically? I'd say so, but I... I, I you. I, so you're going to force the baby, force the, force the woman to we're, have the baby, but then refuse here. to fund her when she wants Medicaid no, 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 to take no. care of it. No, not at all. Okay, first of all... I dragged okay you right into a political <laughs> Yeah, you did. You did. Good job. Yeah. Hey, hats off. Yeah, no I'm problem. I'm going to high-five that one. What's uh, next? <laughs> Okay. It's another song of ours. Um, now, well, uh, hold on. First of all, so your can is okay for women to have the right to kill their babies? No. Because you don't think it's a person? I'm not, I'm not okay with someone killing their babies. Really? I'm okay with someone stopping the medical condition. That oh, that's is tomorrow. A, that's what you meant. That's that, tomorrow. Yeah, that's tomorrow's debate. debate. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's, that's a, that is a woman deciding she no longer wants to be pregnant. <laughs> and again, that's degreed. It all depends. So, so personhood is degreed. It's a yes or no. Once you become a person, it's not degreed. <laughs> a feed, oh an embryo, gosh. is sperm a person? So, no, no. Why not? Because it, it doesn't have... Doesn't the, it, it swim does, and finish. it think and it smell? You know it can smell, let right? Let me finish. Sperm has uh, the ability to smell. Okay, that's but it's fine. But it's not a person. So, so is, is smell, the capacity to smell, part of personhood? I, that's what I'm asking you. Right, okay, well, let me answer. No, it's not. Okay. Function, functionality is not what makes something a person. Uh, we're going to get into some metaphysics here, which I don't know if you're... Okay, so personhood is a set of ultimate capacities. Okay, I'm, you're actually getting to your soul argument, right? Well, okay. Because I, I think you have a... I think you have a... This is probably one of the best arguments, I think, for Christianity. Okay. Period. Period. Interesting. Not necessarily for Christianity, but for metaphysics. Mm-hmm. Someone has said to me one time, you know, if, if, I, if I replicated everything that is you, mm-hmm. like literally everything, your memories, your thoughts, your ideas, your experiences... <sighs> replicated everything that is you and put that thing right next to you that wouldn't be you. Someone has said that to me years mm-hmm. ago and said, is that his argument? That's, is, that, is that one of your arguments too? Not necessarily. Oh, okay. uh, but, but I mean, it does go into, it does, it does get into that. But if I can just finish. Okay, first of all, I'd say personhood is not a degree property because if it is, you would have to specify what qualification do you need to be a person. And once you lose one of those, you become less of a person. Now, I really don't think, because I know you're a great guy. I know you have good morals. <laughs> I, I do. But I don't think you would be willing to say that if you lose these properties, you're less of a person because now there's not equality, David. Right. So I, I think that that's an issue. That's why I mentioned my sandwich talk, not uh-huh. the talking sandwich. Right. Is that I talked about how we apply arbitrary uh-huh. words and definitions to words. Okay. So then I would start arguing, why is personhood sure. even a thing? Why is it even right. something right. you feel the need to define? Mm-hmm. Right. Sure. That's when I get right. into... Well, uh, I would say, first of all, truth isn't invented is discovered so if we discover things that make something what it is now this is deep metaphysics then you can't have essentialism so something obviously there are qualifications that make something what it is 
And if something doesn't fit these properties, it's not part of that category. I mean, I'm sure you would agree with that. It's just a fancier way of saying it. So if personhood is degreed property, then you have to look at elderly and handicapped people and say, ah, they lack these functions that I do, so they're less of a person. And yeah, I know uh, you don't want to say that. I would that. never say that. Right. So then personhood cannot be degreed. I agree with you. Okay, I said that okay. in the beginning, but you started talking uh, about a said, fetus during right. embryologic de- embryo- Embry- Embry- development. Yeah. Let's just call it fetal development. Sure. Um, that thing is not a person yet. That thing. Uh, so what? Uh, it's but a, I mean, you, you look, at the that, moment the sperm hits the egg, is that a person? That's a, it's, it's you know, an egg. I would say I would it's say a egg. fertilized egg is a person. Would yes. you hold up a Would you hold up a uh, chicken? Would you hold up an egg from a chicken and on. say this is a chicken? I would say it has. Would you a, pull it is, Would you pull a, an egg out from under a hen say and say this is a chicken? It's chickenhood. <laughs> No, hey, hey, hey. come on, no, dude. Okay. Oh, uh, come on, dude is not a rebuttal. Oh, let me let me on, let me explain dude. this. I, mean, I just want no, you to think about what you on. just said. No, I want you to think about what you said. You say person who's degreed, so handicapped, I did mentally not say ill. That. Ill really? I did not say that. You, so it's not degreed. So then, I said it's not degreed. When you so just asked question, me, I said it's not degreed. But so the then, point is, a fertilized egg is not a person. Why? If you don't even know what a personhood, what qualifies personhood? Because it's not a person. That it's not a human being. Yourself, it's not a creature. David. No, it's not a creature yet. You just repeated yourself. Oh, it's, and it is. It's Living, in the there's process. Scientific proof that it's li- it is in the process of development mm. into that creature. It is not a completed creature. So why is a kid... A person, a one-year-old, a baby. I don't know. Bur- I don't know. Oh, well, I then there know. you go, and I, I do. Know. And I, that's what I'm going to say. I do know. Yeah. Well, and I you can can't call yourself pro-life if you're in favor of the death sure penalty. Sure, I can. You're not in favor yes, of the life. Yes, I can. Yes, I am. You're in favor and of the fetuses. And the fact that someone took life, then I would say, hey, if you're going to continue to take life, then you don't have that right to keep living if your life is going to be taking others. Okay. Uh, soul. <laughs> okay. If personhood is not a degreed property, which I say it's not. I say it's not as well. Okay, perfect. Then you would understand Then taking half your brain doesn't make you have a person. Right? right. Okay, good. Then that means your personhood cannot be grounded in your physical body. It must be grounded in something Why else. Why does it need to be grounded in anything? That's where I think because, you make the mistake. Right, okay, Why no, does it have to be grounded? Okay, perfect. Okay. Because, what? first of all, you have to ask, well, first of all, what's a person? Because if it's not grounded in anything, then what what constitutes a person? What why does it matter what constitutes a person? Because because if a baby, uh, if a one year old kid is not a person, let's pretend for the sake of argument, for the sake of argument, pretend a one day old baby is not a, a person. Let's just pretend that. Would it be okay to kill it why? if it's not a person? Yes no, or no? No. Okay. Why? okay no. no, you're 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 See, trying to dodge this. There's no. You are trying to dodge this. This is. David. There's no point in this. How is that really? It's pointless. It's Be- pointless. Then why do why do we? There's kill? not a single human being on earth, not a single human being on earth that would look at a one day old baby and say that's, that's not a person. That wasn't the point. That was not. What the is point. your point then? In this? I, I said for the sake of argument, if for some, if somehow someone can show you that this is not a person, would it be okay to kill it's it? A, you say it's yes. A, it's a no, I don't say yes. It's really? a nonsensical question because you say a fetus is not a person, right? Is that what you said? That is what I said. Okay, so, is, so... I do not believe that life begins at conception. Okay, fair enough. But my point is, we agree then it's wrong to take innocent life. Yes? Well, it's... For the most part, all things being equal, it's wrong to take uh, innocent life. Next week, I'll be talking about morality. So I don't want to get into that right now. Okay, anyways. So I'm sure we Because then we have to that. define life. We have to define innocent. If I say it's wrong to take innocent life, that means you can never mow your yard. Okay? So again, that's... Is grass not living, Eric? That's what I'm telling you. That's There's tons that, of the excluded middles. You heard me say personhood. I didn't say. So, is it wrong to kill an innocent person? All oh, things being equal, I'm sure we can say no. What's well, your here's point, the point about okay. the soul. Thank you, thank you. Here's my point. We agree on the same values. We just disagree on the facts. So, we agree it's wrong to kill a one-year-old baby or a baby. I think we disagree on phylogeny. On phylogeny. Call it what you want. No, we phylogeny agree. and the evolutionary process of when an embryo becomes a human being. That's what we agree on. Yeah, which we don't di- we don't disagree. We don't disagree on once a I you know, tre- treating my... people equally. You keep asking me where my point is, and then I'm trying to well, get Well, but there. during your point, you're misstating my arguments, and so I keep having to correct no, that I didn't no, no. say that. All I'm saying is we both agree that a baby... Okay, we both agree it's wrong to kill a baby for the hell of it, right? Absolutely. Okay, what we disagree on is what constitutes a baby. That's where we disagree, correct? You had this. Mm, um, I guess so. Okay, so we agree on the value, but disagree on the facts. So all I'm saying is, all I'm saying is, if if something is human, then it's wrong. We both agree to kill it for no reason. That's all I'm is saying. Is this your sole argument, or are you well, arguing with no. me about abortion at this point? Uh, well, it, it, it has implications to that, because my point is, if personhood is non-degreed, 
then something grounds your, you said, what's, why do we have to ground it? Because we need to know what is and is not a person. Why do we need to know that? <laughs> we, I just explained it. No. If, if a baby is a human, then you're not going to kill it for no reason. But if something is not a human, but a clump of cells, then you can kill it. Why? Because it's not a person. It's very relevant, David. But it doesn't matter. Really? It doesn't matter. <sighs> it doesn't matter what defines personhood. Really? That's something arbitrary that you have to come up no, with to get to some stretch no, definition no. that you think there's magical jelly floating no, around no. and be called a soul. I mean, really? what? if the soul exists, it's not physical. Well, I, don't be know, jelly. I don't know what yeah, it is. Exactly. What is a soul? It is a, an immaterial substance that grounds consciousness. How could it be a substance if it's immaterial? Uh, why are our substances only material? That's I don't a question, know. You, you tell me. No. <laughs> you said there's a substance. Uh huh. What's a substance? I don't know. What is a substance? Right. Okay. A substance is. I would say everything that has properties owns two things. And I don't know if your listeners are even liking this or not or rolling their eyes, but this is metaphysics. A substance is a continuant, meaning it stays the same even if it changes its properties. Contrast that with what you call an aggregate, which is just a collection of parts that don't stay the same throughout change. So here's another example with the personhood, non-degreed soul argument. If I get a car and replace the wheels, is it the same car? It's not a trick question. Just I would say yes. Okay, sure. Uh, now, now say I replaced every single part of this car. Is that the same car? Yeah, and again, I think we're getting into issues of definitions. No, no, no. Saying we're this getting, is saying this no. is my favorite car. We're getting into and essentialism piece, and the pro, and, and what makes a thing what it is. That's what we're getting into. That's this nothing is the, wrong with that. I think this is the drastic abuse of philosophy. That's a philosophical statement, which I think is It may be, but I'm not abusing it. How am I abusing it? In order to abuse it, you would have to know what's the proper use of it. How am I abusing it? You're abusing it by going so deep really? to try to make a. So I a, came up with this to, to not try to make me. right to to try to make a. Um, that's that that explanation. A, no. That you've attacked my worldview, and then I go, why? Why is that valid? Against no, now we're my talking worldview? about my beliefs of the soul. I'm not even now. We we've left that. But isn't aren't you arguing that my atheism is somehow invalid because the soul exists? Sure. Okay, I could say that. Yeah, that's what but, I'm saying. But, then. but right now we're on the point of how, what are my arguments for the soul, and I'm saying no. Just to, first of all, that's a hand waving dismissal. Ah, it's philosophy abuse. I don't want to hear it. So then it's abuse that, of so philosophy. It was, it's, so it's, it's 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 it, it's a it's a so it's an me, intelligently sounding way to justify a really bad concept. And what if I said that you have nothing? You have mm, no way to demonstrate we have a soul. Two things. What if I said that's a non-intelligent way of rebutting my argument without uh, without addressing it? And I said that that's just a way of trying to avoid the soul. In other words, you can't just make assertions. You have to give me arguments. So if I'm telling you this, and if it's true, then it follows from you that. have to you provide evidence, not just make an argument. Right. That you it said exists. demonstrate, for, which is an argument. Can you prove that? I just said, Eric, that you can't. J- You're proving my point for me. No. First you of are all, just you making. Have to hold on. You were just making an argument that a soul exists. You're not demonstrating that it does. Okay. So my question for you is: What exact evidence do you have to demonstrate a soul? First of all, I've already told you the closest mm-hmm. thing I've heard to it is if someone replicated you, that it wouldn't be you. Why don't you use that? Why isn't that something that you go? You know what? If we replicated, it wouldn't be you. What, well, no, I, I could use that. I'm just saying that's not one of the arguments I'm going to use. First of all, you say you have to demonstrate it. Are you saying physically demonstrate it? Because, David, come Cause on. Because you can't physically demonstrate Absolutely something that's not. Non-physical. metaphysical. Non-physical. So then I'm well within my grounds of not believing in it. No, 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 no. If you, nah. See, you do, the, you do one thing with atheism, and then you don't do it with this area. If you don't believe in it, you need a reason. That's false. <laughs> you need to give me a reason to believe in it. If you don't, if you don't believe, like if you say there is no soul, you would agree. You have a burden of proof, right? Of course. I didn't say there's no soul. I didn't say you did. I said I don't believe in a soul because I've yet to see demonstrable evidence. Okay, Do you see Fair that? enough, fair okay, enough. That's my only point. Good, point taken. But you cannot say because I cannot physically see it, it doesn't exist. Or that's not, in other words, if I said, hey, David, there's an invisible man in my I house. Didn't say that. And you said, really? I didn't see no invisible yeah, man. Yeah, those aren't my arguments. No, I'm not saying they aren't. Well, no, yeah, it's analogous to your arguments because you're saying, I don't have physical proof of a non-physical thing, therefore I can't believe it. That's you, a horrible you argument. You are just asserting that no, this No, imita- not asserting. You're just asserting that this thing exists without evidence that it exists. Okay, let me ask you this then. Let me, let me turn the tables if I can. Do you think you're the same person from one moment to the next? 
My, I'm constantly changing. My ideas change. My thought Not processes change. My cells change. Not I think I it's a nonsensical question. Well, that's an easy way to avoid my argument. I, I, it's a, I'm being honest with you. It's a Me nonsensical <laughs> question. Do you think... It depends... I was, I was debating with someone one time. They literally said, depends on what the definition of is is. Actually, that's actually a pretty good point. Because there's oh different forms God. of is. Oh, my God. No, that's oh, the really? abusive philosophy. Really? If I said... If I, oh, no, no, dude, no. Dude, I can't do this much longer. I, oh, I got to say I, this. I just can't. That's this an is, ignorance of philosophy. This is and just I don't mean getting... That it's just getting so muddy and nonsensical. Because it it's deep philosophy? No, that's because why? it doesn't matter. That doesn't, really? I think philosophy. That's bad philosophy. I think, I think philosophy, when it gets this muddy and deep. Oh, excuse is me. Only, oh, my is, gosh. When it gets this muddy and deep, it is just used to Hold avoid. Re, it is just used to avoid reality. So if, if, if a Christian said, I don't believe in evolution because, uh, I don't know why he sounds good. But if yeah. a Christian said, I don't believe in evolution because all that science stuff is nonsense. And you say, no, just look at the science. And understand it. No, I don't want to go. That's too deep. That's an abuse of science. You're going to say you're crazy. You're just, that's cognitive dissonance. Yet you're doing the same thing with me with but philosophy. But science is not the same as philosophy. Of Philo course not. Science can be demonstrated and proven. Philosophy <sighs> is the way we think about different things. No, no. First you and of I all, can have no, different philosophies. No. You can't have different sciences. But one of us aren't right. Sure you can. How can you not? There's a lot of different sciences. That I don't mean that. I mean, that's you can't, what I mean. No, I mean, you can't have... I can't say, here's science that proves this. And you say, well, I believe in a different science that proves something otherwise. I could say that. Why not? That's ridiculous. Of course it is, which is why bad philosophy is ridiculous. That's what I was saying, and I think this is bad philosophy. How? Please show me. Right. Eric, in order, to talk, order, in order to talk about the soul, you were now talking about a car and asking me if you, re if you systematically replace every single mm -hmm. piece of the car, is that still the same which car? I didn't even finish. And that is a... That's a situation no. I don't even want to go down. No, why? Because you want you don't want to, you want to avoid the conclusion. I haven't even finished my argument, and you start giving rebuttals. So first of all, I'm making a no difference. because you want me to sit here while you stack fallacy on top of fallacy, exclude middle, exclude no. another middle, create a false dichotomy, and get the end, and go. Therefore, the soul That's exists. An easy therefore, way Jesus. To avoid my and it's argument. just so I have to inter That's I have to intervene sometimes and no. say I disagree That's too deep with that. For me. That's too deep for you? No, I'm saying is that, that's essentially what it sounds like. Is that's too deep for me? I don't like it. Abusive philosophy next. Now, you can't do that. You can't just wave it. No. Just like a Christian can't say, I don't understand evolution. Monkeys, we don't come from monkeys anymore. Monkeys still exist. That's bad science. So you can't say when it comes to metaphysics, oh, I just don't get it. It's, no, it's I'm, not, I'm not saying I just don't get it. I'm saying that you really? talking to me about a soul and the essentialism of a person... <sighs> But you're using the analogy of a car and replacing every part. I haven't even finished and then you're, that. You asked me a question. Uh huh. I'll Eric, you asked me. Yes listen no. to me. You yes. asked me a question, and when I answered you, you didn't like my answer, so you said no, that I'm didn't. interrupting or I'm not allowing you to finish your question. Not, no. You said to me, "If I replace every single aspect of the car, is that still the same car?" Mm. What the hell? How do I answer that? What? Yes, it's still the car because over time it's changed slowly, okay. or no, it's not so, the same car. Really? You wouldn't say you still had the same car? It's just a trap mm -hmm. question. No, it's, it's not. It's okay, let me know. Don't ask any more questions. Straw I would, man. I would say it's Absolute not the same car. Man. Here's why. Because there's a difference between a substance and what you call an aggregate. Why is it not the same car? Because... Obviously, cars range in prices based on what they have. You take some stuff, you get a dent. And strictly speaking, it's not the same car, especially because you can get the original parts and make two cars, and now you have two cars. So if you're the same person, then you're not just a collection of parts. You're a substance. That's the ultimate but mileage, question. But mileage on a same car. You don't change any parts, right? Okay. I mean, that, that's And you just drive down the road. One could argue that mileage on the same exact car that's changes its value. So sure. you could say, yes. well, if something's yes. the same car, yes. it should have the same value. Okay. No, right. it, nah. it won't have the same value. No, it, again, no, you're, because you're missing the point. Because here's, no, no, I, I know you think it's funny, but if you get a car with 100,000 miles, you just said it changes value. If it changes value, it's not the same car. Now, loosely speaking, sure, you can say that. But just like you change it, the point is there comes so a point. So you're telling me when I buy I a finish, brand new car and then I drive it off the lot and it loses value by $5,000 because I've driven down the road. I'd say that's arbitrary. Suddenly that means. Say that's arbitrary. That's not the same car. I would say that's arbitrary because now, now you're putting concepts into whether or not something's a substance or an aggregate. That's not the point. The point is if you stay the same, then you cannot simply be a physical thing. That's all I'm saying. So, if you are the same person from one moment to the next, and you are a substance, and you cannot be a physical substance, and you cannot Say ground this... Say it again. Which part? The, very th the first thing you just said. If, if you stay the same from one moment to the next, then you are a substance. What is a substance? It's something that can stay the same throughout change. 
Now, I think you have what the problem is. You think only physical things can be tested. Only physical things can be demonstrated. No, which we begs can test metaphysical things. We do it all the time. People test no, telepathy. I heard a show. You said they couldn't. No, I didn't. I said yes, they test did. telepathy. They test psychic powers. They test them, and they fail these tests every time. Well, that's not testing it. If it fails a test, it was tested, Eric. In other words, in the sense that, first of all, I mean, is it true? If something exists, and you should be able to test it, is what I hear you saying. But if you can't test it, then... On an episode a long time ago... <sighs> I'm answering you, Eric. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. An episode a long time ago, I said science has nothing to say about the metaphysical because we c it can't be tested, and the concept of God is outside of science. And then I read Vic Stenger's book, uh, God and the Folly of Faith and God the Failed Hypothesis. I read both of those. I did the voiceovers for them, and I changed my opinion on that. And now I've said really? metaphysical things can be tested. They just fail all the tests that we hold them accountable That's for. That's a weird view, but I don't want to get into that. My point is... If you are the same person from one moment to the next, and there's a lot of, and you say it's crazy, you say it's too deep, but there's a lot of atheists who, st I mean, who, who, uh, there's a lot, and a lot of good atheists who are in this field and are doing sincere work in this, and they say you're not, David Hume didn't believe you're the same person from one People moment to the say next. That to me all the time. I don't and, care okay. about David Hume. Uh, point what is, what does it have to do with the soul? No, no, no. This has to do with your point that I'm making stuff up and getting too deep. No, uh, people have lived this stuff and done it themselves. It's not too deep. It's not. I'm okay. not arbitrarily making stuff up. That's my only point there. So if you're the same person from one moment to the next, and there has to be something that grounds it. Another argument for the soul Disagree. would be that you know, okay, fine, indivisibility of personhood, and then the fact that you're same from one moment to the next, and then the argument from free will. Here's one last one, and I'll stop here. Oh, sorry. What? <laughs> I'm going to get water. All right. <laughs> <laughs> what was the name of that band, by the way? At Calvary. At Calvary. That's yeah. a Christian band that you're yep. in. You're not still in that band? No, we broke up. I mean, just... Oh, man. Uh, vocalist got married, had a kid. Guitar started working a lot. And then I, soon after I got married, and uh, yeah. Real life. Yeah, tell me about it. Is it hard being a, in a heavy metal band like that? That's uh, you can go ahead. Dude. Uh, is it hard being in a heavy metal band that's um, Christian? Is it hard to get booked places? Actually, no. And actually, we a lot of places we got booked were secular places. We rarely got booked at churches, which I loved because that's kind of what I, we wanted to do. So no, it was a uh, we got a lot of. Uh, and what I liked is a lot of people didn't really care whether they were Christian or not. But I was gonna say, did, did you ever get booked somewhere and people just didn't even know you were a Christian band? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, we play a song called "How Great Is Our God," and it's a cover of a Christian worship song. And 99.9% wow. .9 of the time we played this, whether it was at a bar or a club, people sing along. It was it was wild. People sing, people knew the song. So you have wow. guys, you know, we're at a bar singing the song, and people, and, and there's a part in the song where we go a cappella, and you have just people holding up their beers singing with us. And I was like, wow. Oh, it was cool. pretty awesome, yeah. That's pretty fun. So one last argument for the soul, and, and, and we can be done. This is called the unified visual field. Are you going to say the word free will in here? God, if you not. are, I need to keep this keep up. <laughs> I'll try not to. I'll keep it handy be. just in case. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, I was about to say it. Well, okay. Uh. <coughs> <laughs> Damn, I should have let him and just played another song. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So when you see an object, uh, you're, there's different parts of your brain that differentiate the different properties of it. For example, one part of your brain looks at the shape, another part looks at the color, another part looks at its motion, and so forth. Mm hmm but Eric LeCroc, who's a well-known philosopher who's done work in this, and based on other uh, uh, scientific what-have-yous, uh, says that but there's no one part of the brain that brings it all together. Okay. So there has to be something that unites these experience into one unified visual field. I would say it's you, the self. Well, what is that? Okay. I would say it's a soul. So let me ask then. Okay. Could it not be found. something that we don't know yet? You but could say that. Well, could, first could there, of all, could there be something that we have yet to discover that does that? That's not the soul. Hypothetically, yes, but that would be an argument from ignorance. And uh, um, no, I, I would say no. I would say that you assuming it's the soul. Because let me finish, Eric. I, I did. I just, just let me just let me just say you assuming that the soul is what brings that all together mm -hmm. is the soul of the gaps. Mm -hmm. You're just going. Yep, yeah, sure. I'm just applying the soul right. when I'm saying well. Eric, just because we don't know what it is yet doesn't mean we have to jump and say the soul did it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I'm saying, first of all, that's, a, that's a, a naturalism of the gaps, and I haven't finished. Because, first of all, you have to understand, too, that this comes from a say list I of... I knew what caused it. I didn't say you said it. But I'm, you I'm, said naturalism of the gaps applies that I've said I know what the answer is. No, you're saying... I'm not saying I don't know what the answer is, but I'm saying because we don't know doesn't mean you get to just insert the answer to be the soul. Please tell me you get where I'm coming from. I, I do, but I, I, I still stand by what I said. So, anyways... Okay. I, uh, first of all, I think your brain, I, I know, 
Your brain doesn't think. Your mind does. Because your thoughts can't fit in your brain. That's another argument, the irreducibility of consciousness. You can't make physical stuff happen. You, you can't open your brain and see a thought because thoughts aren't physical. I would even submit colors aren't physical because you can close your eyes and see color without light or anything else happening. But setting that aside... I almost asked you earlier, is purple physical? Uh, I almost said that. That would have been fun. Yeah. So anyways, so my point is, since it can't be grounded in something physical then there has to be something, which is part of the argument, there has to be a self that, that owns these things. Here's an illustration that the Eric LaCroix used. He said, let's say there's five chefs, and each individual chef is working on one part of a recipe. Okay. And they're in separate rooms and locked doors. They all finish their parts of the recipe. Does it mean that we have the whole... The, the end product of the recipe? No. Why? Because they're not they're, they're separate. So one person has mm -hmm. the egg. But he says, unless there's an ultimate head chef that can bring all them together and make whatever they're trying to make. That being said, okay. there has to be a self that's not physical because you can't ground consciousness in, physic in the physical stuff. Then there has to be a self that owns all of these things and puts them together into one unified visual field. Okay. That'd be your soul. Well, okay. Now that everything to the end, <laughs> that'd be your soul. How uh, do you know that that's the soul? How do you know it's not yeah, something else doing it? Because, first of all, I already said you cannot... Consciousness is not physical, so you can't find it in the physical. It, it, it would make no sense to say... And, and again, Thomas Look, Nagel's... I'm with you. I'm really close to you there. Okay. I understand what your arguments sure. are. I get it. I yeah. understand that there's... Like you say, there's there's a, a philosophical debate we could have about replacing the parts of the car, or is that still the same car? No, there's something essential about the car that was there, and it changed over time. And we could get deep and have those arguments. I just I don't like that. That's really muddy to me because ultimately, what I see you doing is you get to the very end, and you're right. You're not going to have a meal. Everything you're like, yep, I, I can, I can, I can, I can. I can nod with you and say, yes, you can't have a meal without the head chef putting it all together. Everything mm -hmm. makes it happen. And then you go, that's the soul. And I go, wait a minute. How do you know that? Mm -hmm. How do you know it's not something else? Right. I, well, it's not naturalism of the gaps because I'm not asserting that I know an answer. <laughs> I'm saying you've asserted an answer that that is the soul. Yeah. And I'm asking, yeah. how do I, you know that that's the soul? Because when I was trying to get to the metaphysics earlier and you kind of dodged it, I would say Everything is owned by either a substance or a, a, some people call it artifacts or uh, physical objects. Let's just say a, a, an aggregate. And, and there's difference in these two things. A substance remains the same through change. Uh, a, a heap of sand does not. You know, uh, it, yeah. it, it can change. So, so it's, just, it's really simple. There's just big words put to it because whoever made it, you know, had these, whatever you want to call it. But the point is, if consciousness is not physical, then it cannot be grounded in the brain. I mean, that's just a metaphysical impossibility. For example, if I said... It's not true. Yes, it, it, let me finish. Because if I said, hey, uh, scientists will one day discover how much the color blue weighs. I hope you would say, no, Eric, that's impossible. In fact, it's a metaphysical, metaphysically impossible because that's a category fallacy. Wouldn't you call it a physical impossibility? Metaphysical impossibility. Why would it be metaphysical Because the color blue isn't... Uh, uh, it, it, it's a category fallacy in the sense that... I don't even want to go here... <laughs> Because then you're going to call it just philosophy again, which is what Dillahunty did, and I was like, well, that's not really a response. Uh, abstract objects uh, are, are, are questions of the metaphysical, whether numbers exist and stuff like that. Okay. So that's, in the sense, I would say metaphysical. For example, the number seven doesn't weigh five pounds, right? Right. It has no location in space or time. Right. Okay, it's good. It's a thought. It's, a, it's, a, it's an idea. It's an idea. The, I'll, I'll, I'll take that point is this is metaphysics we're, we're talking about what it means to be that can the number two still exist and lose the property of being even no because that's an essential property of the number two to be even I so it agree makes with no you okay I'm that's still metaphysics there. i'm there Good. okay okay I'm there all right all right so if consciousness is not physical and it, why can't you say one day we'll find a physical thing because that's a metaphysical impossibility and a category fallacy mm, that's not that's where it's different and you we already know that what the number two is we don't necessarily know what consciousness is yet. Why? Because it's not physical? That's that's an argument from ignorance. No. That's a begging the question. How do you finish my own question and then make a judgment <laughs> on what my question is and my answer? You, you answer my question for me and then call it ignorance. Likewise. No. What you're doing is you're saying the number two. We know what the number two is. We understand the number two. It's a concept. We know that it's a concept. Sure. Consciousness right now is very abstract to us. It's very mysterious to us. But we're looking into it and we're starting to see that there are <clears throat> physical things that fire off that creates consciousness. You can put someone into an MRI and you can watch their brain fire off and then when they have certain thoughts. In mm -hmm. fact, did you know that, that scientists and, and doctors have been able to 
make people feel like there was another presence in the room. Sure. By messing with the sure, with the uh, electron, um, yeah. electrodes. That, uh-huh. th- there's something they put on their head. Well, yeah. And they, they do something with their sure, brain matter, sure. and it makes them feel like something's in the room when yeah. it's not. Mm-hmm. That proves that it's physical. Yeah, yeah I know. And no, 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 no. That There's your leap. There is your leap. Therefore, it's physical. That the is fact that it can be manipulated physically. Look, let me put it to you this way. You've had lots of analogies for me tonight. I've got one for you. Okay. Anytime a Hindu has a metaphysical experience. What does that mean? Sorry. A near-death experience. Okay. Anytime a Hindu has yes. a near-death experience, mm-hmm. do you think it's ever been recorded <clears throat> that a Hindu has a near-death experience and they see Jesus? Because it's never been recorded. Really? Never really? been recorded. Uh, I don't want to go into never that. Never been recorded. I can sh- Muslims I can... are the same way. When Muslims have Hindu ha- have oh, have man. when Muslims have near-death experiences, they have near-death experiences that are in line with things they were already taught about. That is so false. That is not false. I, I had someone on. I had someone on my show recently is, who studied near-death experiences, and they found this yeah, and time and time and time and time again. Really, and I've spoken with J.P. Moreland, who's probably one of the the, the leading researchers in this, and and has, has written books about this. So, first of all, there are Muslims who are claiming radical Muslims who are claiming to see Jesus and converting. Now, hold, hold so on. That they already know about Jesus, though, in Islam. Yes, Islam they, teaches they, about Jesus as a prophet. Right, but they don't think he's a messiah. Okay, but you but missed my not point. Go there. No, you're missing my point. Is that it does happen? I'm going to miss your point when happen. I'm the one that made the analogy. Because that wasn't my point. So I'm saying your point, your analogy misses it's my getting, point. It is. It's getting absurd. It uh, <laughs> the point, the, my whole point was that to prove that near-death experiences are physical, which I didn't bring up. But go ahead. But you, but we're talking about it being metaphysical, and I'm telling you, when someone's dying mm-hmm. and their brain is yeah, dying, and they they have an experience where they see Jesus, the only people who see Jesus are people who have previously been taught about Jesus. Okay, I don't agree with it's you. It's happening okay. inside their brain. No. Okay, can I? You can look at the research okay. for near death experiences. Of course. Okay. okay. Continue on. Okay, thank you. I don't think it's metaphysical. First though. of all, I can give you a list of features, which we don't have time to go into. A list of features that would show that consciousness is not physical. I gave one example in the law of identity. If consciousness, first of all, and I also already explained, which you seem to have forgotten or missed or not fully grasp, in the sense that the law of identity shows is not, excuse me, the law of identity is not the same thing as cause and effect. So if I play guitar and I break the guitar, it doesn't follow that music is a guitar. If I break a CD, I don't break the music. I break the CD that it's correlated, the music that it's correlated with. So breaking a CD doesn't prove that music is a CD. It proves that there's a correlation between the music and the CD. You can mess with my brain all day till the cows come home, but if I'm trying to say, <laughs> I don't want to. No, I'm not gonna say it. You can mess with the brain all day, and sure, it would affect the soul. There is a deep integration. Which is, we haven't even got into that. But just because you can affect my brain doesn't mean I am my brain. Equally, oh wow, I've, I had to find. I, I might just have to say it. If we do have a a volition that is not determined, well, what does that mean? <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you. What, what, do, you, you. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> no. A volition that's not determined. I mean free will. So oh. I'm gonna have to go to the doctor. Oh, can I go pee real quick? <laughs> Okay. So. Okay. We have fun with it, but I, I mean, honestly, that 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 music is really cool. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm uh, so, it. so just to wrap it up, are you familiar with with uh, cognitive behavior therapy? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Neuroplast, and which which is why you know the guy talking about the alcohol addiction and what. Sure. Absolutely. Right. But here's the point to that, and and, and this is where it does uh, the the. I told you my Anyways. all my background in education was all psychology. Oh, so I was on okay. I was on my way Great. to becoming a therapist. Great. Then you believe in the soul. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that's it. You, you got me. <laughs> well, you know, psychology does, <clears throat> psyche is the soul, Greek word for soul, is the study of the soul, psychology. Anyways, but that's not an argument. Because you studied it doesn't mean you believe it. I know, and that's why I said it's not an argument. Um, okay. False. So, so you're an atheist. cognitive behavioral therapy can only work, <laughs> don't play the music, can only work if you have a volition in which you can change your thoughts. Okay. Or choose a thing, of, you can challenge a thought. Now, Jeffrey Schwartz, who's one of the world's leading neuroscientists who believes in the soul, who's done great work for patients with OCD 
and, and, and anxiety and depression and stuff like that, has recommended a prescription that, okay, challenge your thoughts. And, I'm, and you, you're probably familiar with it. You challenge your thoughts and you begin to literally rewire your brain chemistry by thinking differently. Did you hear me tell that guy, Adam, that? I said you can literally reprogram yep, your yep, addictive behavior, down. talk about like, awesome. your, your neural yep. pathways. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was, and, and I, I was trying to wrap it up and then we kept going. So maybe I should have you know, went ahead and went there. But yeah, that's exactly the point is, is yeah, you can do that. However, it takes it takes a volition that's not determined. Uh, it takes FW. Uh, but but I'm fine with that. Okay. No. Now now hold on though. But that doesn't that means, get us any. No wait 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 no I didn't finish. So I mean I agree with you there. Kay. So that doesn't get us any closer to. Well of course I haven't finished. Now, if atheism is true and the which would presumably assume that the law of call, causal closure is true that every physical thing has a physical cause, then that's not possible. Why? Why, Why did you go ask, there? Ask the physicalists who say, because first of all, there can't be just spontaneous, uh, uh, there, there has to be something that causes it. Nothing just comes, nothing happens on its own. In fact, if you didn't believe in causes, we couldn't do science. Actually, you we do know do that virtual particle pairs pop in and out of existence. You're confusing cause all the time. with, no, yeah, they do, sure, but they're caused by something. How do we uh, know? Uh, uh, because physicists know this stuff. Yeah, and you're talking about Lawrence Krauss. I forgot the guy's name. We said this guy's full of it here because he does. he's obviously confusing things. He calls nothing. So he, he gives properties Wait, to nothing. Lawrence Krauss is full of it? That's what someone said about it. Now, he, of course, he didn't say full of it. But another physicist who's on par with Lawrence Krauss and, and what he does said, no, this guy. Michu Kaku or Kaku no, or whatever? No, no, no. I forgot the guy's name. But basically, it's, it's, it's like saying this. I can make a fist come into existence by closing my fingers and opening them. And look, it just comes out of nothing. No, no, it, it's something's happening there. So all he's saying is See, that there's that is a, such a straw man uh, argument. That okay. is such a straw man. I, I don't want to. I don't want to go on to Lawrence Krauss right now. Yeah, that's such a. <clears throat> okay, fair enough. It's a misunderstanding of, okay. of nothing. Right. <laughs> you understand nothing. You misunderstand nothing. Yeah, I, well, yeah. That doesn't mean you understand everything, but you misunderstand nothing. Right. Well, category fallacy. But uh, now, if you can think on your own and your thoughts are not caused by something because again we can't do science unless we believe things are caused that's what science does it looks for causes so uh you might know this as uh what matt calls himself all the time what is it a, a, a methodological naturalist right mm -hmm. so you look for physical causes that's what we do in science sure okay well if there's a soul then 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 it's not something physical causing it so there has to be something physical but if there's not something physical and you have neuroplasticity cognitive behavior therapy it follows that something is going on there that is affecting the physical and not caused by the physical. It only follows that you that you have free will. It only follows that you have the ability to make those decisions. Yeah, and I go back to my other argument that says, look, if, if you have free physical, will, you can't be an atheist. No, that if that it, no, that if you're just physical, there can't be free will. If right, you're just and, physical, there can be no free will. That's the false premise you built your no, entire argument on. I can I, I, maybe you can read it when I when I give you the book. First of all, you're not the first mover because you're caused by prior physical factors outside of your control. And I've already demonstrated that you don't have to be the first mover in order to have free will. So your argument falls apart right at the beginning. When no, I talked you about pushing no, you into day. You didn't. That was not nope. All that showed is that there's one area where I didn't have free will. Okay. That's it. That's all you did. Well if I can show you in one area that that's the case you can no longer say you <sighs> must be the first mover in order to have free no, will. No, no, no. Because in that case, you were no. a, you were a second mover, but you still had the ability to change your mind, which gave you first free of will. all. You're confusing once again the ability to physically do it with the will to will t against it. There's a difference. Remember the tying chair example. Right, but it, before you moved, you had to will yourself to woo, move. Sure, I, I don't. I don't. What right. are you trying to say there? Uh, okay, <laughs> unless you wanted to, I, I don't really didn't get the point of that. But you got to be the first mover, and you got to be able to do, not do something. If you're just physical, can water choose not to freeze at a certain temperature? No, no. So physical objects must obey the laws water of chemistry has, and physics. Water has not evolved to be <sighs> able to think. Panpsychism, right? Because everything can be eventually become conscious. Water has not evolved to be able to think, and humans are. And this is a god of the gap. Basically, so it's a your entire book. Naturalism works in mysterious ways. Basically, your book is God of the Gaps. No, it's that's not. all it is. No, your atheism are, is false. Atheism is your false. Your are atheism of the gap. You're like <laughs> atheism is false because if this, if this, if this, then this, <laughs> then automatically this. Actually, no, I it's, don't do that. It's filled with God of the Gaps. I, I don't. It's filled with two things, God of the gaps and false dichotomies. You exclude the middle constantly no, 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 and no, no, assume no. the conclusions no. before you ever start. Actually, here's what I do. He's And David uh, my David Shepard's read some of the book, and so has Evan. Uh, I don't say, therefore, atheism is false. I say, if you're an atheist and you have to give this up for these reasons, 
And that's what I say. Not that atheism is false. So I'm saying, look, you're fi- you're free to give them up. But if you give up free will, you can't say it was your free decision to become an atheist. And back to what I said to you, and I want to end on this. Okay. Nobody comes to atheism because they think some compelling argument of naturalism mm-hmm. is what I want to believe in. Sure. It's the fact that religions fail over and over to provide sufficient evidence. Wow. So atheism, atheists become atheists not for a... Any positive reason, reason right, about atheism that, which, which is which is the worst way, reason no it's come, not yes, because it you're misunderstanding atheism assuming you're right that's what i was gonna say atheism assuming, is not uh, right. a worldview uh, okay atheism is the answer to one question mm-hmm. period yeah. and, and as, so as in like, order to tell me atheism is false you have to get me closer to theism okay. and you can't do that no all, all no all i have to do is that you're not unjustified in rejecting it and if the the position okay let's let's not call it atheist let's go what do you what, what would you want to call it well Someone the, the subtitle no of your book uh-huh. calls it you, you're going through it, and you call atheism a worldview. Sure. And I'm, I'm warning you. What's a worldview? Before the book comes out, uh-huh. don't call atheism the worldview because atheism is just the answer to one question. <laughs> atheism is not Which my I, morality. I conceded. I conceded that that atheism is the answer to one. So are you going to change the subtitle of your no, book? No, because oh. no, that's like uh, g- no. You're saying change the subtitle of your book because I don't agree with the definition, and neither do a. Uh, and there's a lot of dictionaries who are wrong too. No, I'm. I, I, I could say the Let same thing. Let me say thing the dictionary you. thing one more time. Uh, the vast majority of dictionaries have the correct definition. Every now and then I'll come across a definition that's written by some Christian that says oh, really? atheism is the assertion that no God exists. So, and that's just false. Th- this is this would take us into a, a lot more time, which I'm, I know we're trying to, we've been trying to wrap yeah, up. We got to be done soon. Yeah. But anyways, at some point I want to have you back on and I want okay. you to provide reasons for why I should be a Christian. Interesting. Because honestly, arguing against atheism too easy is just stabbing Jello. Because everything you call you try to equate evolution with atheism no, and say no, no, you no, said no, multiple didn't. times that if point. you're like in, in in the quick rambling you would go if atheism <laughs> leads us to evolution therefore whoa, 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 no 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 you're not letting me finish no th- but that 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 that's very mm-hmm. first statement is just incorrect so I I can't we can't go past really? that. My point is, in order to make me not an atheist, provide me with a theism that makes sense. No, provide me with evidence. No. Provide me with evidence for your theism, Mm-mm. and I won't be an atheist anymore. No, that no, that's like no, no. That's first of all, that's under the assumption that atheism is a view that that I lack belief. But if if atheism is simply a lack of belief in God, then this cup of water is a lack of is an atheist because it lacks belief in God. So if your if your view leads to absurdity, I mean that really sure. Were you wait a minute. Sure? You were wait a minute. Sure. My view leads to absurdity. Yeah, that definition. You're talking about essentialism in a car. No, no. Yeah, yeah. And how's I mean, that absurd? This whole conversation has been absurd? absurd. Just because you're hand waving philosophy. No, ah, it's because philosophy. you're using That's that to get rebuttal. to an argument of a soul. No, no, I'm using that to explain what an aggregate is or a, a physical object. Do you realize that you retain. ask me a question and as I'm answering, you go no, 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 the whole time I'm talking, and then no, you just continue. No. It's really difficult to have a Sorry. conversation that way. Apologies. I'm just being honest with you. It's, no, it's very you. difficult. So I didn't realize I, it. Sorry. Yeah, so my, my, my point is that <clears throat> if you want someone to no longer be an atheist, mm-hmm. convince us of a theism. Mm. Attacking methodological naturalism or evolution or abiogenesis or the soul concept of free will or consciousness, none of these things are going to get an atheist to go... You know what? I don't understand consciousness. Therefore, Jesus came mm-hmm. back from the dead. Mm-hmm. That's just not going to happen. Atheists are going to read <laughs> this book. Can... Atheists are going to read this book, and they're going to say the same comment we got from a listener. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've got a comment right here from a listener. He says, "I think Eric has a point about having a defeater. However, this doesn't lead to theism." Right. He said, "This is why I'm not an atheist, as if to say I don't like that scenario. So mm-hmm. I'm going to believe." It's not the case in order to be a theist, mm-hmm. which is not an argument about whether it's true or not, right. rather what you prefer to believe. Sure. And well, that's no. where I see a lot of th- atheists are going to read your book. I will. You, a lot. you will. But I think a lot of atheists are going to read your book and go, of course it's not perfect. That's why atheism is not a religion. It doesn't have statements of faith. It doesn't have statements of fact. Atheism is the answer to one question. Eric has spent an entire book refuting something that isn't even a worldview, and you've gotten me no closer to your theism. So maybe part one can be refusing atheism, <laughs> but you need to tell me what I should believe in if right, I'm not an atheist. Right. Uh, I'll go ahead and, uh, uh, spoiler alert, at the end of the chapter, at the end of the book, I say, okay, this is the end of this part of the book. Let me give you one more chapter just for kicks and giggles. Here's why I'm a Christian, and I go through the resurrection. However, however, okay. 
everything you said would be true if your definition of atheism is correct. So that all weighs in or, or hinges on the belief that atheism is simply a lack of belief. You're about to say that this cup, is this cup an atheist because it lacks belief in God? No, I think, I think atheism, yes no. well, it can't answer a question. That wasn't part of your criteria. Now you're adding. That's yeah, no, ad hoc. No, 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 no. I said atheism. Eric, I said atheism is the answer to one question. I agree. Can that cup answer a question? That's, that wasn't your definition, Can the though. cup answer a question? No. No? Okay, so can so? it even respond to the question of a God existing? So, no. So now that's So it can't be a theist or an wait, atheist no, no. because it can't answer the question either way. Hold on. Hold on. You only said atheism is simply a lack of belief in God. That's that was your criteria. Now your well, definition has to be lack uh, of belief in God of. plus the ability to answer a question. Are okay, babies fine. an atheist? I, I've argued both. <laughs> I, I've, I have. I've I've been on both sides. I've said if a baby lacks, a, 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 if that's the definition, then yeah, the cup is an atheist. And that's absurd. That's Come absurd. On, of course, really? it's absurd because it doesn't matter. So now you have to keep adding, 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 adding to to, to refuse. Keep, Second thing, keep. Yeah, keep adding because uh, it, it lacks belief in God. Plus, you have to be able to answer the question. And then and if I it. say something so else, that's it. No, that's it. Let's not keep adding. So, so uh, okay. So let me ask you this then. Uh, let's pretend the devil existed. Is he an atheist? No. Why not? Because he knows God exists. Okay, so God can exist. At, uh, here's where I was going with this. So he knows God exists. So he doesn't lack belief in God. Right. But and actually, I I I he turned against. God. I went I went the wrong way. I went the, I, I asked the wrong question. So let me my medicine's wearing off. I take I'm have ADD. What I was going to ask is, are you one that holds that atheism means without without belief in God? Yes. Right. So which is not the etymology. That's not the etymology of atheism. Atheism is atheos. Without God. Without God. Right. So, if that's... I don't know if you agree with that, though, so I don't want to take a straw man. No, yeah, I, I've used that argument before, okay. that it means without God. And right. I, it's always just been assumed that without God meant without that belief. Because my understanding of it is the first Christians were referred to as atheos by the Greeks because mm -hmm. the Christians did not acknowledge the Greek gods. Sure, right. Yeah. So then... Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Atheism means... Really, quite frankly, it's the belief there's no God. But hold on, if you say atheos without God, then by that definition, the devil is an atheist because he's without God. But clearly, he believes in God. So there's another absurdity. You can't say because at that point, Eric, atheism is simply a, no. You come on, David. You can't just say come on. Eric, that if, answers my if question. early Christians came along and said we believe in Jesus, yes, we don't believe in uh -huh, Zeus, those, right? Sure. And the Greeks go, well, then you're without God. You're without the real God. You've made up this fake God, sure, Jesus, right? Then they're they're telling him mm -hmm. they're, they're telling those believers that they're without belief in that God. Yep. They're saying you're lacking a belief. They're not just saying without God. You're saying you uh -huh. lack the belief in the God. Mm -hmm. So that's what the etymology well, leads to: is mm -hmm. that anyone who lacks a belief in a God is an atheist. Why is this even no, a concern for no, you? No, it's not. No. Why, why is first, this an issue for you? First of all, I'm sure you wouldn't. You we don't get our definitions from pagans because. So you're saying if it's in history, then it can't be you wrong. You get your holidays from pagans. I don't know why you wouldn't get your. <sighs> We're not going to definitions from pagans. <laughs> We're not going to go there. <laughs> you know I'm right. Uh, we're not going to go there. Dra drag a tree into your house and hang some fruit from it. I will. Um, <laughs> you Nordic pagan, you. <laughs> uh, so, just because pagans use the definition of atheism the wrong way doesn't mean, ah, oh, therefore... They're, cause so, so that, you that's just, just used that oh to my prove God. my etymology was wrong, and now you're saying they're wrong in their definition. No, I'm saying the Eric. etymology is without God, and by okay, that man. definition, the devil can be an atheist, but he believes in God. So that's absurd. This cup can be an atheist, the devil can be an atheist. Absurd definition. Let that, okay. okay, I think you have a gross misunderstanding of atheism. Likewise. I think you have a misunderstanding of evolution. I think Likewise. you have a misunderstanding of abiogenesis and so you methodological think I'm wrong. naturalism about everything. Right, Absolutely. You think I'm wrong. But thanks for coming anyway. Hey, thanks for and having And instead me. of playing us out with I'm Afraid of Americans, uh, let's go and hit the lights. Nice. Oh! <laughs> um, to hear this, uh, this whole album, uh, it's actually at ReverbNation.com. Slash at Calvary slash songs. <laughs> ReverbNation.com. It's pretty cool. The band's called At Calvary. Yeah. It's a Christian band. I'm warning you now, but I'm digging the music. You can get it for free on there too, I think. Right. Lydia's gonna be in studio tomorrow to debate evolution. I mean uh, to debate abortion nice. against another atheist. We'll see you next time. Eric, thanks for coming out. Yeah, Eric Hernandez Ministries, if anyone wants to get in touch with me. Eric Hernandez Ministries.com? Yes. Eric Hernandez Ministries.com.